Thanks, Chris, and that's a pretty tough act to follow. A lot of uh, excitement at the Kingdome and a great comeback for the Cleveland Indians, the pennant winners in the American League last year. Now we bring you to the National League. And, of course, it never was the National League until tonight. As uh, they may not be quite ready for prime time, not quite ready for Broadway, but ready or not, the Arizona Diamondbacks become a reality tonight. And uh, you see this big crowd, this sellout crowd, get used to it. Yeah, that's going to be the norm at this uh, new Bank One ballpark. Here's the batting order for the visiting Colorado Rockies. It'll be Mike Lan Lansing at second base, Ellis Burks in center field, and then the Blake Streak Bombers. Larry Walker, the MVP last year, Dante Bichette, Vinny Castilla, those three combined for an average of 38 homers and 120 RBIs last year. Todd Helton, he's the man who replaces the veteran Andres Galarraga at first base. Nafi Perez, watch for him. He is one of the most exciting young players in the league. Kurt Manwaring, the veteran catcher, and Darrell Kyle, 19 and 7 last year, will be on the mound batting ninth. And on the mound for the Diamondbacks, the tough right hander, the veteran Andy Bennis. Andy Bennis is not the first time he's had an opening day start. He's done it four times prior to this. Got a good fastball. He's a true ace, hard slider, good changeup, but he's been working on one pitch we'll look for tonight, and that's a good slow overhand curveball that he'll throw early in the count. Bennis. Getting that final moment of concentration. They played up by Jim Quick out to inspect the baseball and the huge crowd. And then we have seen those uh, flash bulbs popping all around this ballpark for the last 45 minutes as they had the opening ceremonies. So all of the uh, the pomp and the, the color is finished and now it's time to play ball. Here's the first pitch in this new ballpark. Wow. And they'll send that ball to Cooperstown to the Hall of Fame to shoot off the fireworks. So at 8.22 p.m. Mountain time, the first pitch to Mike Lansing was ball one. The second pitch is a base hit. And Lansing, the former Montreal Expo, who coincidentally was also the first batter in the first game ever played in Denver when the Rockies was the first year expansion team in 1993 he led off that ball game at Mile High Stadium for Montreal and now tonight he's the first batter in the first game in this ballpark with the Rockies and he's aboard and uh, Rocky fans get used to that he's going to be aboard <laughs> an awful lot this very year. very good uh, trade for them to, to get Mike Lansing at, at second base outstanding defensive player maybe even a better offensive player capable of hitting 30 home runs. That was a 1-0 high fastball by Andy Bennis and uh, a base hit. Good hitters are going to hit pitches up in the zone. So now Ellis Burks will come up. Mike Lansing, the runner at first base, has uh, struggled with a bad back. And uh, his manager, Don Baylor, a little concerned that he hasn't really had the proper number of at-bats to be fully ready for the start of the season. Although you, you couldn't tell it from that at bat, he's already on board. No, I talked to Mike yesterday, his lower back. I asked him how he did it. He said early in spring training, just uh, working out extra. Uh, a lot of early work he was doing with uh, on his defense, really, working with uh, Nafi Perez, his new shortstop. And uh, he's, he's been very sore, but uh, had to make the opening day lineup. Ellis Burks and Lansing back to the bag at first. Lansing has had back trouble in his past so anytime that the back tightens up on him he takes that seriously that's a foul out of play you get into that Rockies power real quickly and as Kevin Kennedy mentioned <laughs> even Mike Lansing the leadoff band is going to likely hit a lot of home runs he hit 20 home runs for Montreal last year in one of the toughest pitchers parts in the National League but now you get to Ellis Burks who had 32 home runs last year. The man on deck, Walker, had 49. Jay Bell. And there's one away with Lansing moving over to second base. Taking a look at the Diamondbacks defense, some familiar names on the left side. That's Jay Bell at shortstop and Matt Williams at third base. A couple of guys that have had gold gloves before. And uh, look at first baseman Travis Lee tonight. We talked about him, uh, his offense, and he has a, a very good hands at first base, solid defensive player as well. 
And here's last year's most valuable player, Larry Walker. Walker didn't have a full spring either. He had some uh, arthroscopic surgery on his right elbow, had a bone spur removed. But he says it does not affect his hitting, and that's bad news for Andy Bennis and for the National League because he had an incredible season last year. Well, Fabregas and uh, Bennis are having some problems here, Kevin, getting together on the signs. Or is it the signs or well, the, the philosophy they're having? My philosophy, Andy Bennis has only had three starts in spring training, or four starts, actually, 13 innings as well. So it's going to take a little while getting used to a new catcher. Fabregas has had a nice spring. But uh, early in the season here, it's going to take a while to get the battery adjustment made. One ball and no strikes to Larry Walker. Walker with the 49 homers, 130 RBIs, a 366 average in the triple crown categories. Hard to second. This is uh, Eddie Diaz over to third Lansing. Two men gone. And still more Rockies power to come up now, but not the big cat any longer. Andres Galarraga now in Atlanta. And Dante Bichette, at least for now, moves up to the number four spot of the order. Bichette had an incredible spring. He finished at the spring hitting eight home runs in the last seven games. Well, he came into spring training, and people were saying he was overweight at 260 pounds. But uh, looking at him tonight, seeing him yesterday, it looks great. And as you said, he finished extremely well. I like the way he uh, put it. They said, how'd you, how'd you get all that weight? He said, well, a lot of uh, time in the weight room and a, a, lot, of pasta. a, lot, of, a lot of pasta <laughs> served by my wife. Very well, no strikes to Dante Bichette. Two down, runner at third base. Dennis particularly tough against right-handed hitters. He was one of the toughest in Major League Baseball against the right-handers last year. Jamming Bichette in the hands. One ball, one strike. That was an 88 mile an hour four seam fastball. Tried to come in on Dante, and that's uh, where Dante likes the ball. If you make a mistake, middle end, he'll put that thing 450 feet in the left field bleachers early. One ball, one strike. Two and one. Denny Castilla is out on deck. Well, Andy Bennis is throwing well. His velocity, 88 to 90 miles an hour so far. He's trying to pound Bichette in. See what he does in his 2 and one pitch if he throws that hard slider. The outside part of the plate here. There's a slider. Right to the short spot, Jay Bell. Saw a very successful first inning for the young Diamondbacks. And now the Diamondbacks and Devon White. For the first time, we'll come to the plate. Stay with us. Something's coming to your neighborhood, and it's big. So big, it's a revolution in television, with over 200 channels, including your local favorites, plus more than 50 movies every night, with digital quality picture and sound, and no expensive equipment to buy or maintain. So you have all the enjoyment, but none of the hassle. Coming soon, Cox Digital TV. It's digital television without the dish. night in sports entertainment the baddest man on the planet on march 29th the two greatest attractions in pay-per-view history collide in one colossal event as iron mike returns to the ring wrestlemania tyson live sunday march 29th only on pay-per-view it's the return of iron mike on cox cable Masquerade Village at the Rio. You won't believe your eyes. The only place to play in Las Vegas, the Rio. High overhead in unusually cool downtown Phoenix. That's a look down inside the Bank One ballpark. The roof is open, and the, the huge crowd celebrating the arrival of Major League Baseball 
in the Valley of the Sun. The batting order, Devon White, Jay Bell, and Travis Lee, the first three, then Matt Williams, the, the big slugger. And he should hit a lot of home runs in this ballpark. Brent Brady in left, Kareem Garcia, George Fabregas, Eddie Diaz, and Andy Bennis hitting ninth. And on the mound for the Rockies, the 19-game winner from the Houston Astros. That's where he was until this year. Darrell Kyle upon his strong right arm they're basing many of their hopes for a division title here in 1998 he had quite a season last year awfully tough to hit and now he gets ready to face the first Diamondbacks hitter the flash bulbs go off all around this ballpark and Devon White takes a cold strike and Darryl Kyle of course has an outstanding curveball and that's his output there it is all in two now he had a very poor spring and an 8.4 earned run average in the spring but he said he's very pleased about his endurance says his curveball's better than normal this time of the year but and there's another good one yeah he's shown two good ones already uh, that's not really anything to worry about in spring training. He's adjusting to a new manager number one and Don Baylor and the new ball club and we talked about uh, his battery mate now uh, Kurt Manwar he said his command is the one thing he was a little concerned about well, there's that curve. Beautiful. Strike three. Don White. Take a look at the Rockies defense, and up the middle we have a new double play combination. Mike Lansing at second base. Nafi Perez at shortstop. He has outstanding hands and a strong arm, and uh, should turn a lot of little plays for guys like Daryl Kyle. Nafi Perez. Don Baylor really excited about him, and there's Lansing. And here is Jay Bell. Speaking of double play combinations, the veteran, the longtime Pittsburgh Pirate, who will be the best shortstop on everyday paces for the Pirates since uh, the days of Gene Alley. And he's become quite a quite a hitter over the years. Perez will show off that arm right away. One away. Or rather two away. After the strike out of White. Take a look at Nafi Perez right here going to his right the crossover step plants the back foot and shows that rocket arm and actually just kind of cast it over there and still got it over there very well. John Helton accepting the throw two down and here is Travis Lee. 22 year old left handed batter hit fifth most of the spring. And the people were rather surprised when Buck Showalter announced that he was going to be his third place hitter. This is the guy, John, that could be an impact player immediately in the major leagues. Up the middle, he's got the first diamond back hit. And now Matt Williams will come up. But perhaps fittingly enough, Travis Lee, who really is the future of this franchise, and for Travis Lee, perhaps the future is now. Right away, they invested a lot of a lot of money in Travis Lee. Here's a high fastball, very balanced swing, good follow through, right back through the middle. Heard a lot of good things about Travis Lee. Remember, he had 30 home runs last year in his first full season in the minor leagues, and has passed every test that Buck Showalter has put him to. Now Matt Williams back in the National League. Oh, there's that curveball. Uh, I will say Matt Williams I'm sure did not miss facing Daryl Kyle while he was over there in Cleveland because he's never hit Kyle very well. I don't see anything wrong with his curveball tonight John. He's got an outstanding uh, breaking ball tonight. Top to bottom. And that is strike two. Now this ballpark the hitters from both ball clubs after working out here yesterday and the Diamondbacks of course played here on Sunday an exhibition game and the early reports are that this should be a great hitters ballpark Frank Thomas who's I, to me an authority on the long ball I think so he says <laughs> the ball <laughs> carries, carry on hitting he says the ball carries very nicely here yeah and ironically uh, when the roof is closed that's, that's when you'll be able to find out just how it carries fastball in on his hands right there and the roof is open in the summertime the ball should jump quite a bit last night in batting practice we watched the roof close up 
around 5 o'clock as Colorado was taking batting practice and it didn't seem to uh, bother their hitters at all. The ball was still jumping out of here. And not just the big guys like Walker and Bichette. Everybody was hitting it out. Matt Williams. Second baseman. Lansing right up the middle for him. Travis Lee will hold it first as Manwaring is an excellent defensive receiver. Kept that ball in front of him. That's why he's catching John Kurt Manwaring. Block that curve ball and keep it right in front of him. Not an offensive player. Never been a real strong offensive player at 222 lifetime average. And Jeff Reed actually hits Daryl Kyle very well. Close to over 400. But Kurt Manwaring is in there for his defense. You've got to win the starting pitching and defense, and they're strong up the middle. Kelton on the back at first with Travis Lee. We've got two young first basemen in this game tonight. Both starting their first four years in the major leagues. Todd Helton with the Rockies and Travis Lee of the Diamondbacks. Lee much more heralded. One and two to Matt Williams. And it's two and two now. On deck, it's it's a little different from that than being in Cleveland. It's not Jim <laughs> Tomey yeah, or right. Manny Ramirez or any of those guys or Dave Justice. Sandy on deck, Alomar, it's, on and on. It's Brent Brady on deck. Nothing against Brent, but uh, at least at this point in his career, he's not he's not Jim Tomey. A little yet. different protection, but uh, pretty good hitter, Brent Brady. But a little different different protection than Man Williams has been used to. And that's the question for Matt this year. Who would ever give him anything resembling a pitch to hit in a big spot in the game? That's why he's not getting one right now. And it's not a big spot in the game. Of course, you don't want to put a runner in the scoring position in a walk. But uh, Daryl Kyle is certainly staying away from Matt Williams because his strength is a middle end fastball. So he'll probably stay with that breaking ball away even in this situation. Travis Lee will be running at first. Helton now playing behind him. Three and two to Matt Williams with two down. There goes Lee. Oh, look at that. Throws him strike three call. So, Daryl Kyle, the new Rockies ace of the successful first inning. Vinny Castilla coming up. Guys like, whoa, guys like me don't get much respect. I mean, I hit big, but there's no deal or commercial. I make huge plays. I'm not even in a cereal box. But, man. I could care less. <laughs> Triple play 99. You've never seen baseball like this. Who needs cereal? Whoa. EA Sports. It's in the game. On a clear night in the outback, they say you can see every single star in the sky. And people come from all over with one thing on their mind. Food. That looks like a steak knife to me. From juicy steak to tender chicken, fresh fish to barbecued ribs. And up ahead, ladies and gents, dinner. You'll see things you won't see anywhere else. Outback Steakhouse. No rules, just right. Demanded better training facilities. Insisted on new uniforms and equipment. Held out for hundreds of free tickets. These guys will stop at nothing to get whatever they can for the Boys and Girls Clubs of America. Major League Baseball Charities and the Boys and Girls Clubs of America, giving kids a world of opportunities. ESPN's opening day special is brought to you by Embassy Suites Hotels. Reserve on the internet or call 1-800-EMBASSY. And by TWA. At TWA, they're working to win your next flight with every flight. They want to be your airline. Opening night, 1998. Major League Baseball is back. I'm John Miller with Kevin Kennedy. And we're certainly pleased to have you joining us today. Great job. The earlier telecasts. Here's the first pitch base hit by Vinny Castilla against Andy Bennis as we start the second inning. No score in this game. So Castilla is aboard, but at least they kept him in the ballpark. He's hit 40 home runs in each of the last two years. 
Well, that was a pretty good slider down and away. He just found the right spot in the infield right through the hole between short and third base. Keep him in the ballpark. Now the young Todd Helton will come up. Helton, only 24 years of age. And he's hit real well in the minor leagues. And Don Baylor feels he's going to be a, an excellent big league hitter. He doesn't have a lot of power, at least not at this point, but he says he's an excellent two-strike hitter. And you see what he did last year in Triple A ball, 352 at Colorado Springs. Yeah, he uses the field uh, more than uh, some other first. Uh, Galarraga also used the field last year, but uh, he, he has good line drive power, let's put it that way. And talking to some of the people that saw him last year, said he's a situation hitter. He'll look for pitch middle end sometimes, and he's got some power straight away right field. So he's capable of hitting 20 home runs, particularly in Colorado. Don Baylor, who uh, like the talent he's got in this lineup with young guys like Helton and the man on deck, Nathy Perez. Nice pitch by Bennett. Strike two on the outside edge. Well, as always, the Rockies figure to be an offensive machine, particularly when they play at home. But they did uh, hit much better last year on the road than they had the year before. Especially guys like Walker. And uh, Dante Bichette still was uh, a great Coors Field hitter. That's a foul out of play. Two strikes to help him. Well, every year I hear they want to trade Dante Bichette, but all the guy does is keep putting up numbers, whether it's Coors Field or not. He still plays 81 games there, and I'll take the numbers that he puts up. Well, I mean, in terms of the Rockies, they're not asking him to put up numbers, uh, say, at Exhibition Stadium or some other ballpark in some other league. I mean, That's he right. plays half his games in there. That's right. And he hits extraordinarily well, though. Well, you design your club according sometimes to your ballpark, and uh, that's what they have. There's no sense in getting a bunch of speed guys and putting them into Colorado. You get, you get mostly power, and that's what they've done. Blake Street Bombers. Although... This all that power. Baylor likes him to run a lot too. That's a high foul off the left field line. And you can see Helton battling it out here with two strike count. Well, this ballpark, we're going to be taking you on a little tour when we have opportunities tonight. And some of the uh, oddities out there in center field, they have that overhang that overhangs the field of play. People sit up there and uh, you got the girders underneath and out in the center field wall two pillars you see them protruding out there two and two now he goes up and in that time to help him after working him exclusively away and look at that in straightaway center the wall out there is 25 feet high and those two big pillars are in play and John there's going to be a lot of uh, triples in this ballpark just because it's going to hit off that and the, and the outfielders won't know how to play the ball uh, Larry Walker told me before the game he could he could take 100 balls every day and still not play it the way he's supposed to play. <laughs> Just off the outside, three and two now to Helton. Well, Helton has really battled him here after falling quickly behind 0 and 2, which goes along with what Baylor said before the game. But this guy is not intimidated on 0 and 2. In fact, he's an outstanding two-strike hitter. Well, he's gone outside. Andy Bennett's gone outside most of the time. He came in on a 2-2 pitch. Let's see if he comes back in and stays away. Castillo running. Back out of play. Breaking ball. And that was also the eighth pitch of this at bat. And Bennett's just not finished with him yet. Well, Colorado, we have talked about their power, but they have improved defensively, and they have improved their starting pitching, starting with Kyle and getting Astacio last year. So the makeup of their club is changing a little bit. And uh, they're definitely not afraid of a guy like Helton playing first base. Estacio will pitch their home opener one week from today. Castillo runs. And again, Helton fouls it back. Well, Dennis is uh, having to go through the whole repertoire here. And Helton showing that he's not going to go easily. Well, Helton's showing he can take uh, the outside pitch and foul it off. I'm, I'm anxious to see here if they're going to try to bust him inside three and two. Which with a lot of big hitters, it's not a good count to do that because they'll take you deep to the right field. But we'll see what Todd does. They got him looking out over the plate. Let's see if Andy comes inside here. Castillo goes. Down the left field line. That is a fair ball. Into the corner. Castillo is being waved home. Brady having a, a few problems out there playing the carom. A double for Helton. It is one to nothing for the Rockies. That's, that is a great at bat. That's a great at bat by Todd Hutton. We talked about the 3-2 count. I was anxious to see if they'd come back inside because 
He had fouled off five or six pitches on the outside part of the plate. He was locked in on the outside pitch. And boy, that was right off the corner of the plate, maybe even a ball, but he protected it and stroked it into left field. Did not try to pull off the ball, went right with the pitch. Venice had a little bit of a pattern there. And there's the first uh, bounce off those pillars and intricacies out there that we have. Nooks and crannies, I guess is the word. Here's Nafi Perez, the switch hitter. He takes high for ball one. He played an awful lot for the Rockies in the second half of last year, but mostly at second base. But he became a favorite at Coors Field. Got excellent speed. He get a hit. Got great range. I mean, and the guy plays with that, uh, that feeling of joy out there, too. He loves to be on the field. Pretty good pitch right there. 91 mile an hour, four seam fastball. I'm assuming they called that down. It looked like a pretty good pitch. Too quick to play the umpire. Two and all the count. Kurt Manwaring is on deck. A run is in. Nobody out in the second inning. Do that one right past him. Two and one now. This ballpark, 330 feet down the left field line, 335 down the right field line, but I mean there are angles and corners on that wall everywhere. Showing the mark. It is three and one. There is. Backs away and has a long look at his third base coach, Gene Glynn. On Baylor. Baylor, even though he plays in this great offensive ball, probably the greatest offensive ballpark in baseball history. Does a lot of running, bunting, things like that. I had I had to bat that one away, John. <laughs> Did, what happened on that ball? I think we were talking, or you were. I, it hit me. I, I, and you dropped it? Well, that's why I'm not playing anymore. <laughs> Passed ball. That's why I'm up here. A pass ball on Kennedy. <laughs> Good thing I looked up. That I was looking at the, the monitor. <laughs> would have been the first broadcast ovation in the Bank One ballpark. And I was wondering what everybody was looking at. All of a sudden I looked up and there the ball was. <laughs> Thanks, Napy. <laughs> well, I know what happened. I mean, you were concentrating on on the relationship, the chemistry. I was. I was looking at me this and you, right? Thing. Oh, yeah. and you too. Yeah, and me. Yeah. <laughs> Here's Kurt Manwaring. You were telling a nice story about Baylor, though. I think you were leading up to something. So I, I've <laughs> forgotten all about that now. <laughs> about running, I believe. Ball came in the booth. You booted it. <laughs> I'm humiliated. I want to crawl under the desk now. I think I saved your head, though, John. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was going to catch it. <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> Can you imagine opening night in the big park, 50,000 people, and you get the ovation? First for everything. The first one. <laughs> That's the first one I've gotten in 22 years. It would have been. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Still a win. One ball and no strikes to Kurt Manwaring. Two men on. Still nobody out. He's pitching the outside from Dennis. One ball and one strike. The pitcher, Daryl Kyle, is on deck. The inning starter on a single by Castilla. And then Helton on a 10 pitch at bat doubled into the left field corner. Driving Castilla home. Now Perez is walked. Slowly hit towards second. Per uh, Diaz the second. And uh, that's the only out to get there. Bell with. Helton rounding third was ready to fire over there, but Matt Williams never got over to the bag. So runners at first and third now with one away. Well, that ball jammed uh, Manwaring so bad it was hit slow enough where he didn't have a play to turn two right there. Bell, the veteran shortstop, knows he doesn't have a play at first base, looks to third base in case the runner is rounding too far, which he did not. So we have first and third. Here's Daryl Kyle now. And the key to that, breaking that up, Nathan Perez got down there on Bell to stop him from thinking about going to first base. Good base running by Perez. So now Manwaring at first, Helton at third, one away, one run is in. The last time we saw Daryl Kyle, as you see the two base runners, Kyle is facing the Atlanta Braves at Turner Field. In the division series, pitching for the Houston Astros, and he drove in the only run they got that day against 
Greg Maddox. Frustrating day. Kyle did not have the sharp curveball in the first inning of that game. Gave up a, a quick home run and then got real sharp the rest of the day, but it was just enough to beat him. The Astros just could not break through other than Kyle himself against Maddox. You get through the heart of the lineup and you got the pitcher, and maybe a little bit of letdown right there. The opposing pitcher beats you. So I know Kyle's overall career numbers are not very good, but from what I saw last October, seeing as I got that RBI hit against Greg Maddox at all, darn good hitter. Middle infield double play dead. And this is the safety squeeze. The runner from third, Helton was not breaking for the plate. No, he's actually just going, I believe. Yeah, you're right. Safety squeeze or just sacrifice. First and third and one out. He's just trying to get the runner first base in the scoring position. He puts a real good bunt down. The runner will try to advance from third as well. So more properly said, though, just a sacker. He's only trying to get that runner from first. Yeah, point. early in the count, he had the count in his favor. Baylor let him hit, see if he could drive the run in. A lot of managers, first and third, even with one out, will bunt their pitcher in the National League to try to get the runner first in the scoring position. And caught by the catcher Fabregas in foul territory. And the reason you do that, then you've got a runner at second and third and two out, and a good hitter like Lansing, if he gets a base hit, he score two runs. Kyle might strike out, might hit him double play. So Taylor wanted to give Lansing a chance to come to the plate with runners at second and third. That didn't happen, but he still has first and third and two out. Melton at third. Manwaring is over at first. Travis Lee on the bag with him. One run is in for the Rockies here. Bennis has really had to labor in this inning. He's thrown 25 pitches, and that's really significant because uh, it is the, the, the work that he didn't get in the springtime. It is significant, as he told me yesterday. He only had 13 innings. When a pitcher tells me that on the side, it means that he has a little bit of concern. He didn't get his 20 to 25 innings. Matt Williams. And that is the inning. So he got out of it nicely. One nothing. Colorado. You never know when your number is going to be up. That's why you need protection against the unexpected. But life is full of surprises. Could live to be a hundred. So at the Conseco companies, our goal is to help you protect wealth, create wealth for life. Sprint announces 300 minutes free. Another great reason to stay in touch. Hello. Hey, honey, who's the character actor with the bald head? You know who I mean. Sign up for Sprint Sense Long Distance now, and it doesn't matter what you talk about, because you'll get a great dime a minute rate and up to 300 minutes free. This is great. What, the movie? No, talking to you this long for free. Look, it's him. Talk all you want and get 300 minutes free. Call now, 1-800-PIN-DROP. Most of the world's major airlines rely on this oil company for fuel. With that in mind, what kind of gas do you think they'd make for your car? You'd be right. Sitco, when it counts. Somewhere between home white and road gray, there's chalk. Where chalk blends with clay, there's dust. And if you keep your eye dead center, where dust and ash converge, you'll strike an overpowering color called smoke. One of the colors between the colors created by Canon. Canon Laser Color. Its only competition is reality. Zanardi, Andretti, Vassar. When's the last time you were stuck in traffic going 148 miles an hour? Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach. Sunday at 4, only on ESPN. Last of the second from Phoenix, 1-0 for the Rockies. Well, they said Daryl Kyle had problems this spring, but he's got a pretty good curveball in the first inning. Here's one to Devon White for the strikeout, down and in, checking his swing. Three and two to Matt Williams. Got him looking. No problems with Daryl Kyle today so far. Well, if he had uh, been that sharp with his curve in the first inning last October in Atlanta, <laughs> he might have beaten Maddox that day. That is true. Now Brent Brady will lead it off. 274 average last year with the Minnesota Twins. 
And it's a foul ball out of play. He was the 13th choice in the first round of the expansion draft last November. Got into 61 games for Tom Kelly's Twins last year. At Salt Lake City, in half a season, he had hit 354 for the Buzz. That's pretty good in any league. He's a pretty good line drive hitter also, kind of like uh, Todd Helton for Colorado. Go with the pitch. You pitch him outside, he'll go with it to left field. A 92 mile an hour fastball Daryl Kyle's throwing, so he's, he's throwing extremely well right now. Well, a lot of uh, speculation with Daryl Kyle when he finally gets to the mile high atmosphere or lack of same in, in Denver as to how that will affect his curveball and how that will affect his game and affect his psyche. A field line and that will drop back in amongst the spectators. Two balls and two strikes. Well you know they used to say that in Triple uh, A Albuquerque because of the altitude in Albuquerque in the minor leagues all those Dodger guys oh, you're not going to have a good curveball. You learn to pitch in altitude. You, you learn to make better pitches. There's another one. Look at the peculiarity out there. The overhang over the, the center field wall. It starts over the bleachers out there and goes right out over the field itself. There's the big curveball, but it's too low. Full count now to Brent Brady, Kareem Garcia on deck. Look kind of like kind of neat seats out there, right over the field. And they've got a desk out there at the press box. Right field, base hit for Brent Brady. Now let's get an update from Gary Miller. John, this opening day was special as well for the American League edition, the Tampa Bay Double Rays in Tropicana Field. Wade Boggs, the Tampa native, one of those editions that came later. Ted Williams, a local Hall of Famer, one of four Hall of Famers on hand. Boggs, homered, not a common occurrence for him. 17 runs in the game, 18 hits by the Tigers, but the Double Rays lose 11 to 6. Back to you. Thanks, Gary. And, you know, Wade Boggs, after their first workout there over the weekend, said, man, the ball carries here like Coors Field. <laughs> Maybe he's going to hit some home run power this year. Here's Kareem Garcia, formerly with the Los Angeles Dodgers. Garcia was the uh, the fifth choice in the expansion draft from the Dodgers. Hit 305 and half a year at Albuquerque last year. And went with the Dodgers for a brief time, but missed the majority of the second half of the season with a shoulder injury. He eventually had to have surgery. Still affects his throwing a little bit. Yeah, he has an above average arm normally, and uh, he, this is a good pick in the expansion draft. And a lot of tools, a very highly touted guy in the Dodger organization. Ball to strike. One ball, one strike. Garcia is from Mexico. And uh, already uh, the Diamondbacks have been marketing themselves down across the border in Mexico. They played a, an exhibition in the series. Kareem got there. one of the biggest ovations I noticed uh, in the lineup. One ball and two strikes. He's makes his home now, still in Mexico in the offseason, in the Ciudad Obregón in Sonora, Mexico. His his father was a, a a baseball legend in the Mexican leagues, Francisco Pancho Garcia. Ball. The first one that really didn't do anything for Yeah, the well, that's because he tried to do a slide step there. And uh, when you do a slide step with throwing your curveball, he got out too fast and his arm dragged behind. That's why he just kind of flung that ball up there high. You still got to load up even when you're doing that quick step, that quick slide step. He was doing that to prevent the runner from running on him. Frank Funk, the pitching coach for the Rockies, watching his new charge. Curveball too low, check swing, and rule the swing. And the appeal, third base on Pine Larry Poncino, brings him up. Well, this is his curveball again, like the 22 to Devon White. So from this angle right here, well, it's your call. Larry Poncino thought he went far enough. One down, and here's George Fabregas. Judgment call on that. Yeah. Usually, I think that call gets called no swing. That tells you right there, though, how, how sharp his curveball is breaking. How Kareem just it fooled him. 
the thing breaks sharply so so hard down over the top and down 12 to 6 type curveball if you had a clock a 12 to 6 12 to 6 12 o'clock is on top 6 o'clock's on the bottom you get to the top to bottom so the ball just goes straight down straight down a and drop then, a drop curveball he doesn't have that flat curve that 3 to 9 or 2 to 8 were you a pilot I've been known to do a lot of things. Incoming, <laughs> 2 o'clock. <laughs> yeah. anyway, it, uh, it is 9 o'clock here. Phoenix time right now as we play the last of the second. And the fastball comes in at about uh, a quarter to 6. 2-0. Oh. Here's an example of a Daryl Kyle. Uh, I'll give him a 12 o'clock, what do you think? <laughs> Down curveball. <laughs> And it fooled Kareem Garcia. Yeah, I thought that was like a 11 to 4. Right. <laughs> Two and all the count. The Fabregas. Number for his one. This is Helton. There's one. Perez back to Helton. Two. Double play. And just like that, the inning is over. One nothing for the Rockies. It'll be Burks, Walker, and Bichette. The Bombers are coming up. Stay with us. Golf's not hard with Tiger Woods and the AirZoom TW. A common problem in golf is the slice. One solution is to play with the gallery. Having women and children to my left and right is a handy reminder that I need to keep my club face square. Now let's see how this tip works for Jill, a 27 handicapper from Logansport. Go get him, Jill. Jill overcompensated for his slice and hooked it. Something we'll be sure to work on next time. The Sabre Safety Day sweepstakes is almost over. So hurry into your Buick dealer today. It's your last chance to win one of 10 Le Sabres, or a home security system, or one of thousands of other First Alert products. Plus, you can get low 1.9% APR GMAC financing on a new Le Sabre. So hurry into your Buick dealer today. Sweepstakes ends March 31st. Here at the first hole of the Cooper Tire Invitational, a tough par 8,000, dogleg left from San Francisco over the Mojave. A quick update, earlier leader Arnold Palmer in front of a pesky giant O. Then he found the rough, and lots of it. Yet he seems to be moving along quite well. Bill? Thanks, Jim. Arnie, what are you using on this rough terrain? Cooper Tires. All right, you heard it. Arnie laying 6,020. The world is your course. Drive on. ESPN's opening day special is brought to you by Cooper Tire and Rubber Company. Cooper Tire, the world is your course. Drive on. Normally by this time, Major League Baseball has packed its bags and uh, headed off for uh, distant ports of call. The Cactus League having ended, but now Major League Baseball has its own home here in Phoenix permanently. The Diamondbacks themselves at their spring training down the road in Tucson, as did the Colorado Rockies. They were neighbors down there, and now they're, they're also neighbors in the National League Western Division, beginning that rivalry tonight. Dennis with a slider to Ellis Burks, and at his own one. Burks, Walker, and Bichette. And if any of them get aboard, Vinny Castilla, four sluggers in a row coming up here. Shallow right center. He's lost a step, perhaps, but he's still one of the most exciting and outstanding center fielders in the game. Yeah, he is. That's why uh, they say they're, they're pretty strong uh, up the middle as well. Jay Bell at short and Yvonne White. And Eddie Diaz, we haven't talked very much about at second base. The reason he's starting tonight is for his defense. Now here's Walker. What a year he had last year, to say the least. An, an understatement to say that, but some research showed that his batting average, home run, and RBI totals as high as they were in all three categories. The only big leaguer who ever had a season with all three of those categories higher than that, Babe Ruth. 366, 49 homers, 130 RBIs. And he was launching balls into the upper deck in right field. I asked Larry before the game how it plays. He said, well, 
I hear a few in the upper deck in right field. <laughs> he was modest about it, though. That's his Larry. Most total bases in 49 years since a guy named Stan Musial had over 400 in the National League. I mean, name a category, and Walker not only was outstanding last year, but almost historically outstanding. Uh, plus, he's a gold glover in right field, and he steals bases. On the inside corner, strike three call. A little credit to Fabregas the way he held that pitch on the inside corner. Actually tried to pull it back. And Bennis made a perfect pitch. He painted him on the inside corner. Watch his pitch right here. Just pulled it back. Just throws it there. Just a little bit. It might have been an inch off the plate or two inside. But uh, Fabregas a nice job of framing. And that one just off the outside to Dante Bichette. Two down. Larry Walker. Having been uh, dispatched. That is a base hit. Oh, God, I got that low slider. Two down runner aboard, and the batter will be Vinny Castilla. There's more baseball tomorrow night on ESPN. Uh, Wednesday night doubleheader. The San Francisco Giants will beat Houston in 13 innings today. Face the Astros tomorrow night, and Oral Hershiser makes his Giants debut. Then at 10.30, the New York Yankees, and many favor them to overtake Baltimore in the American League East. Will the Yankees get it started tomorrow against the Anaheim Angels from the, the newly renovated, uh, renovated uh, stadium in Anaheim? It's now Edison uh, Field, Edison International. Edison Field. International. The Ed, I guess. Tonight we're in the Bob. B.O.B. Yeah, ah. Bank one ballpark. The locals have adapted the name already. Bob. Turner Field in Atlanta. The Ted. <laughs> Vinny Castilla singled and scored a run his first time. And Dennis needs to, to get through this inning with a, an economy of pitches. I mean, at the bottom of the batting order, in the last inning, he started uh, getting the high pitch total. Yeah, having, already up near 50 pitches in this game. Yeah, 13 innings in spring training. He could probably go 90 to 100 pitches tonight. Slider misses. One ball, one strike. He's now at 47 pitches officially. Mark Connor told me yesterday, probably if he gets six innings out of Andy Bennett tonight, he'd be extremely happy. Normally, you try to get 24, 25 innings out of your starters. In spring training. So Andy's at 10 or 11 innings behind him. She has missing in the outside. But there's a little history between these two ball clubs. Uh, they really don't like each other. Although Bennis says uh, he has no more animosity for the Rockies than for anyone else. But last September, back to the bag at first is Bichette. September the 7th, when he was with the Cardinals, he was trying to bunt and he got a hit with a Pedro Estacio pitch. And broke a finger on his right hand, was out for the rest of the year. Bichette running. Matt Williams. And that is the inning. Castilla goes down. One to nothing, Colorado over Arizona at the two and a half. The Meta 5090 copier with digital time lens technology from FKM Copier Products. Imagine programming complex copying jobs from your PC. Simply program, print a barcode, scan, and walk away. Anyone can do it. For a personal demonstration, call FKM Copier Products. Knowledgeable people you can rely on for guaranteed service and support. More choices, better choices. Mita from FKM Copier Products. There's a traditional Japanese restaurant in Orange County serving outstanding tempura, teriyaki, and sushi. Yamabuki is now open at the Disneyland Pacific Hotel. For reservations, call 714-956-6755. The Disneyland Hotel has something for every appetite. Enjoy choice Black Angus beef at Granville Steakhouse, zesty Italian cuisine at Stromboli's Ristorante, or the freshest seafood at Shipyard Inn. For reservations, call 714-956-6755. Masquerade Village at the Rio. You won't believe your eyes. The 
only place to play in Las Vegas, the Rio. A magazine success starts with the writers. Get me the lowdown on Jordan. What's this beef with the Bulls? And give me a piece on the Latin influence on baseball. Pedro Martinez, Omar Vizquel, with a preview on all 30 clubs. Comprende? Print it, baby! Opening night, 1998. I'm John Miller with Kevin Kennedy. There's the look from the MetLife blimp. Snoopy, too, providing aerial coverage of the ball game between the Rockies and the Diamondbacks. Combined, the blimps Snoopy 1 and Snoopy 2 have traveled over 700,000 miles since the program began in 1987, and we're very happy to have them with us tonight. They can work with us whenever Anytime. they can get over here. <laughs> here is Eddie Diaz. Kind of a surprise that he was here for right. opening night. People thought Tony Batista, who played second as a starter most of the spring, would get the nod, but Diaz was brought back from Tucson from a minor league assignment and activated yesterday it, I guess Kevin like his glove those Tulsa and Oklahoma numbers are from the Texas Ranger organization where he was drafted by then assistant GM Sandy Johnson high pop-up I think that's the highest pop-up so far in the history of the bank <laughs> ballpark did and it hit the roof we're well, getting, there all, no roof. getting all the history <laughs> here tonight and uh, Nafi Perez grabs it there is one away now, maybe you've noticed, I don't know how you could help but notice, the the path between the pitcher's mound and home plate. And maybe when you first saw it, you thought, wow, what is this, an old Ronald Reagan movie? Where's Glover, where's Grover Cleveland Alexander? Because uh, it's been at least 50, maybe even 60 years since a, a major league field featured that. What I guess in those days was a, a standard feature, but the, the, the dirt pathway between the mound at home plate and Buck Showalter thought that this was a he wanted to take it back idea. to the past yeah yeah it reminded me uh, of those old baseball games those uh, pinball games we used to do back in the 60s I'm aging myself now, but, uh, yeah. at Disneyland yeah my father told me about those <laughs> one strike the cut to Andy Bennis one out nobody on there it is that path where the ball used to come right out of him roll up to the bat and punch the button and swing the bat that's that, uh, Maybe I'm the only one that, that that's, played that. That's I don't a pinball game you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> In this game, the guy has to release the ball. <laughs> one strike to count to Bennis. We have a, a delay here. A beach ball got loose. Out of left field. Also have uh, some uh, another. They're, they're kind of styling. The ground crew styling here with the the cutouts around the bases out there. Yeah. Normally they're. Uh, a semicircle. They've got angles on, even on the base pass where they cut the grass out. Then it sets a foul off to the right into the second deck of this three tiered ballpark. All into the count. Devon White, the leadoff man, is on deck. And you could also come out here and uh, dine al fresco when the roof is open That's right and field. watch the ball That's game. Field. One ball and two strikes. Out in left field, and get the the restaurant, the front room, and uh, all kinds of uh, features like that in the, the ballpark as well. Todd Helton in foul ground, and Bennis is retired. At number two. Well, I wanted to compliment uh, all the the crews who worked the earlier games that we saw here on ESPN today. The uh, the ball game in Baltimore, Kansas City, and, and the Orioles. Which didn't turn out the way I think uh, many people figured with uh, the Kansas City Royals facing Mike Messina and company. Larry Sutton drove in three, but a great job turned in by the crew there, including uh, Dan Schulman and Ray Knight. And then, of course, Chris Berman and Joe Morgan brought you that, that wild game at the Kingdom. And with those two clubs and those offenses, how could the game That's have been? That's a typical game in Seattle. Any different than that? <laughs> Although, I think when Randy Johnson pitches, Mariner fans are accustomed to getting nine runs and winning in a laugher and not blowing a nine to three lead. Check swing foul by White. He struck out his first time and quickly is behind in the count here. 0 and 2. Two down, nobody on. One to nothing, Colorado leading in the third. Some wild games today. Mark McGuire has already hit a grand slam. And, and I read a note that said it's the first time a Cardinal 
that ever hit a grand slam on opening day. And that's, that's a lot of opening days. That's a lot of opening days. They've been around for more than 100 years. <laughs> that's hard to believe. And that's an omen for the season. For Mark McGuire. 61, yeah. maybe? 60. 62. One to go. <laughs> well, he's now hit, what, 25 in 52 games since going to St. Louis. <laughs> maybe number one with about 75 to go. Trying to help him with the unassisted out. White is retired. Helton will be coming up. one nothing Colorado. Air Canada has more non-stops between the USA and Canada than any other airline. Who always greets you warmly and asks so little in return? The folks at Red Roof Inns. A genuine smile, a clean, comfortable room, and a great rate. Dogs have no concept of money. No pockets. Red Roof Inns. Nice people and an honest value. When sports cream, when legs are sore, when backs ache, when muscles hurt. Why sports cream? Rubbing it in brings fast pain relief. No medicine is smell. Why sports cream? Because it works. Hello, Peterson. Henderson. Listen, can't talk, real busy. Just want to touch base. About that contract, uh, let's get moving on it. Yeah, I'm a mover. I'm a shaker. Let's shake. <laughs> we make owning a cellular phone affordable. Can't do it. Gonna be in Hong Kong. So you can act like you have a lot of money. Yeah, how's that stock doing? Up two and five-eighths, well then sell. Even if you really don't. Sell, 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 sell. Mom! Dad's doing it again! Circuit City, you can't get a lower price. We guarantee it. Kevin just alluded to opening day 98, a scoreless game between Ramon Martinez and Todd Stottlemyre until Mark McGuire hits a grand slam, the tenth of his career, his first opening day grand slam since 89. Last year on opening day, Ken Griffey Jr. hit two home runs. He hit one tonight. The Mariners hit three and lost to the Indians. John? Thanks, Gary. Yeah, Griffey hit one into the uh, upper tank, third deck at the Kingdome. That was quite a shot. And then Buner and Russ Davis also homered in the same inning. And they never scored again, that Cleveland bullpen. That was kind of the pattern we may see from Cleveland for a while. Real shaky starting pitching, but a great bullpen. And most of those relievers had a great spring. Here is Todd Helton against Andy Bennis. We're into the fourth inning now. One to nothing, Colorado. Helton has driven in the only run of the game. And a 10 pitch at bat. Hitting a double into the left field corner. And he really battled it out with Bennis after falling quickly in an 0-2 hole. And Bennis just could not put him away. He had a great at bat. Bennis went away, 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 away. One time in, back away, and then Pelton went right with it down the left field line for the RBI double. Left field, but this time for the out. Brent Brady. 76 to the power alleys in both left center and right center. And those look like they'd be awfully reachable here because the ball does seem to carry well. 407 to straightaway center and then to the left and right of straightaway center, the, the two deepest parts of the ballpark, 413 feet out there. Looks like you want to get guys to hit it straight away here. Nafi Perez, ball one. Well, you want to get him to hit it where that 413 is. <laughs> There is walked his first time. Popped up. Matt Williams gives chase. Well, that is in amongst the spectators. No play. One ball, one strike. Had uh, two uh, great pitching duels today. Atlanta beat Milwaukee two to one. The Atlanta Braves, the former Milwaukee Braves, and the Milwaukee Brewers, the first team of the century to switch leagues. Open against the Braves. Uh, the slogan in Milwaukee this year is uh, 
The Brewers are taking it national. It's been a hit, too. Ticket sales way up. Travis Lee with the unassisted put out. Perez is gone. Two men gone, and Kurt Manwaring. And the Mets played almost uh, almost a doubleheader before they defeated the Philadelphia Phillies, one nothing. And how am I getting all this information without <laughs> Gary Miller being right here? Well, they've got the out-of-town scoreboard here with all the scores posted. And uh, they've got both leagues there in right field and also down the left field line. So you are always going to be plugged into the other games in baseball when you come to the bank one ballpark. We haven't really talked about the pool in right center yet, have we? So I've been you don't want to talk about it. I've been that. trying not to talk about <laughs> it. I had to bring it up. <laughs> pool? This is a ballpark. <laughs> there is a pool in right center. Right, it looks to me like you're shooting a movie out there. I think they are. Yeah. They better watch out because that, that is very reachable for one of these hitters to hit one out there just over that right center field fence. They better be watching as they're swimming. Plus, who would have the guts <laughs> to go swimming with 49,000 people watching? We're on TV. Call the strike <laughs> of the outside. <laughs> Two and one the count. We have a pool and a hot tub out there in right center. It's the only thing that just doesn't, it just seems odd to me out there. It doesn't go. The rest of the ballpark, very nice. And that is the inning. Diaz throws out Manwaring. The first three up and three down inning for Bennis. It'll be Bell, Travis Lee, and Matt Williams coming up. When I decided to train for this, I heard it all. Jehu, you fool, this is the desert. Jehu, it's 110 degrees, crazy things. I practice around five, six hours a day with the rumble pack. On the slopes, in the half pipe, Jehu is there. It's very spiritual. Just you and the mountain, and the snowboard, and the game. 1080 snowboarding only on Nintendo 64. Real close to the real thing. I warn you, snowboarders, watch out for Jehu. How do you separate knowledge from noise? Call Invesco. 38 no load funds. 65 years experience, a global perspective. You should know what Invesco knows. Now's the time to roll into Sears because you can save 20 to $60 on a set of four select Michelin, Bridgestone, Trail Handler, or Viper tires. So get in, get tires, and get rolling. Sears Auto Center. I've been vending Coors Light for a long time. It's who I am. At home, it's, hey, beer man, pass the peas. When the mail comes, it says, hey, beer man, you may have won $10 million. <laughs> Being the beer man's a wonderful thing. People know Frost Brew Refreshment. They're always happy to see me, and I'm recognized wherever I go. Hey, beer man. Hey, bobbin head doll man. <laughs> Coors Light. Coors Light. ESPN opening night coverage from the Bank One ballpark in Phoenix, Arizona. The Colorado Rockies, who were doing the same thing just a, a mere five years ago, they opened that season on the road at Shea Stadium and then later came on to uh, open their home season at Mile High Stadium. And what an incredible experience that was. More than 80,000 fans were there for that opening game. And the first batter who ever batted in a home game for the Rockies, Eric Young, hit a home run. They went on to beat the Montreal Expos, and they drew 4.4 million fans that year. A record that I'm sure will never be uh, equaled, even by the, the Rockies themselves, because their new ballpark just doesn't have 80,000 seats. Here's Jay Bell. Rounded a short his first time. And that's a foul. Bell, Travis Lee, and Matt Williams. This is uh, most of the power for the Diamondbacks right now coming up in this inning and Bell did hit 21 homers last year for Kansas City. And there's Matt back home and he makes his year round home here. That's low. And his three kids live here, two daughters and a, and a young son. And sadly went through a divorce last year and was sort of in a state of depression all year being in Cleveland and away from his kids. And when the season was over, he actually 
had a handwritten letter that he sent to right. John Hart pleading with him not only to be traded but to be traded specifically to this franchise right here that's right he was going to retire with him. after this fulfilling his contract with Cleveland he was going to retire now Travis Lee coming up again they feel this guy's got a chance to be a superstar and Buck Showalter talked about his uh, young protege Travis is a special young man you know it's very obvious that his mother and father did a great job raising him he's handled all the things that have been thrown at him He's handled uh, single A, he's handled triple A, he's handled Arizona Fall League, he's handled spring training, on and off the field. Uh, the one thing Travis is going to have to do is, is be able to say no. Everybody wants a piece of Travis Lee right now. Uh, we think he's got a chance to be an impact first baseman. Well, he got the first hit in the history of this franchise. And now he comes up with Bell aboard here in the fourth inning, and Matt Williams on deck. So this is a a big at bat against Daryl Kyle for Travis Lee to try and set the table for Matt Williams and get a couple of men on makes it much tougher to pitch around Williams. Well at first there's Williams on deck. Well, they started John they started Travis Lee in a ball last year he had about 18 home runs and they jumped into triple A and uh, he had 300 and about 14 more and he had 31 or 32 home runs last year. And 30 32 all told with 109 right. RBIs. One full year of pro ball is all he's had. He's from uh, Olympia, Washington. And, uh, you know, he wasn't even drafted by a major league team out of high school. And he even had a problem getting a college scholarship offer, even though he hit 603 as a senior at Capitol High School in Olympia. And there's another guy, Mike Piazza, never got drafted out of high school. Nice curveball. And now Kyle is ahead of him, one ball and two strikes. Lee sent a videotape to Jim Dietz, the uh, baseball coach at San Diego State. I know. And, and Dietz offered him a scholarship. That's where I went. <laughs> I know that man. <laughs> it's now called Tony Gwynn Field at San Diego State. Let's have some good players come out of there. Popped him up. This one will come back out of play. And Lee is still in there with a one ball, two strike count. He, Jim Dietz gave him the. Uh, scholarship and also a spot on a, uh, a team the gold Panthers, up in Alaska summer league right. team and uh, Travis became the first high school player to make the all Alaska team so I'm sure Dietz at that point knew what nobody else seemed to know that he had a good one he was a freshman all American back in 1994 at San Diego State Travis Lee they say that he's very low key very unassuming and he got this huge contract, $10 million, unprecedented for any young player who never played a day in pro ball. And you can see that it creates pressure, but he says if you sign something like that, you've got to back it up. Well, it says a lot for him hitting third in this lineup. That's how much Buck, Buck Showalter thinks of Travis Lee to hit third in this lineup opening day. It's a guy like Matt Williams behind him. 22 Buck. years of age. Buck has said that he has made, met every challenge that they've put to him so far, including spring training, where he hit well over 300. Lee also on the uh, U.S. Olympic baseball team in the Atlanta Olympics. Down the third base side, it's a foul ball. Just barely foul. The third base coach waving the runner bell around. The fans think they scored a run, but both umpires signal foul ball. Right. Jay Bell went back to third base thinking maybe a fan inter <laughs> and interfere with the ball or whatever. He's just getting yeah. worried now from Poncino. No, no, not here, Jay. Here's Buck. We'll go back to first base. Here's Buck's first argument. <laughs> first argument in the National League. Briefs. Well, what's that? I mean, he's just verifying just to what, be sure. what the call Absolutely. Was. No question about both umpires. The third base umpire, first of all, signal foul ball. Here it is. Larry no Poncino. Larry Poncino at third signaled foul immediately. It's his call. That ball, if it goes over the bag, it, it's a fair ball. But it, it's not where the ball landed. If it travels over the bag in the air in, in fair territory, it's, it's, fair, it's a fair ball. And Brian Butterfield was like, go, go, go. <laughs> That's a tough call. Well, I mean, he didn't know the guy called it foul, so just go ahead and keep hey, playing, right? Well, it looked fair to him. It looked like it went over the bag. It's not, well, where the, it's not where the ball landed. It's, if it goes over the bag, 
and it's a fair ball. So unfortunately uh, for the Diamondbacks the most exciting moment in their franchise history never happened. <laughs> there goes the runner. Base hit. And Bell will take third. And Travis Lee with all that promise is already two for two and the table is set for Matt Williams. That was very cool with the plate. Three two pitch. Fought off a curveball with that foul ball down the line. Comes back with a three two pitch. Very smooth. Turns on it. One hops it over. First baseman Helton's head. And Jay Bell running on the pitch easily gets him to third base. By the way, I asked Vinny Castilla before the game about this infield. And he says it's just like Corey Sheena. Very fast. But he says very true. He likes it. He says particularly he likes it as a hitter. And so does, <laughs> so does Travis right. Lee. Well, here's Matt Williams. First and third. Nobody out. And the two young first basemen have been the hitting stars so far tonight. There's a curve just off the outside. He struck Matt Williams out on a curveball in the first inning. Well, Matt Williams' strength is fastballs middle in, and, and we've talked about that. He does not walk very much, Matt. He's, he's pretty much a free swinger. In fact, he has never walked as much as 40 times in a season. The most power hitters, the Frank Thomases, the Barry Bonds, they, they'd rather share a walk over 100. Third base side, Castillo goes home, and the tag out is applied by Manwaring on Jay Bell. Over to second, Travis Lee. Williams aboard on the fielder's choice. It's like a two-seam fastball in on Matt Williams that he pulled off of. And Vinny Cassia threw a strike to Manwaring. And Bell running on the pitch, no matter where it was, hit to stay out of the double play. I don't think they would have had two. If, if Bell had stayed there, I, I don't think they would have turned a double play on that ball, but uh, Jay elected to go. It wasn't hit uh, very hard. And now Lee at second, Matt Williams at first, and here is Brent Brady. He got a base at his first time. One to nothing, Colorado. Last of the four, Daryl Kyle in some trouble for the first time. A spike in its own one. Good 72 mile an hour curveball. And that curveball is comes in real tightly spun. I mean, I mean that particular one. They're very sharp. You try it, it sometimes out of the hand looks like a fastball. If you, it, he throws that hard one where it comes right at you and the bottom drops out of it. And that's why he fools a lot of hitters. That's the 12 to 6 one. That's the 12 to 6 one. All right. A lot of guys throw those flat ones, those 3 to 9 ones. Those ones get hit a long way. <laughs> this could be two. Perez steps on the night one. The first <laughs> double play. And it's the second time that Kyle has gotten out of trouble with the double play ball. Still 1 0 Colorado after four. What do you look for in grass seed? Quick results? We seeded it with Scott's seed last fall. As soon as I planted it, boom, it just came in. A really terrific lawn? And it feels like crushed velvet under your feet. It's wonderful. How about weeds? Bargain brands can contain thousands of weed seeds that can ruin your lawn forever. You can spend a dollar or two less for a bag of seed. But you don't want weeds in your grass seed. Scott's Premium Grass Seed, 99 and 99 one hundredths percent weed free for a beautiful lawn guaranteed. Don't hate me because I'm beautiful. Hate me because in 30 minutes I can hack into your computer system and bring your entire company to its knees. So while you're watching me, who's watching your network? Guys like, whoa, guys like me don't get much respect. I mean, I hit big. But there's no deal or commercial. I make huge plays. I'm not even in a cereal box. But man, I could care less. <laughs> Triple Play 99. You've never seen baseball like this. Who needs cereal? <laughs> Whoa. EA Sports. It's in the game. At First Plus, we'll beat any deal. Hey, if you're a homeowner, bring us your best deal on a fixed rate 125 no equity loan, and we'll beat it. No games, no gimmicks. Just the best deal on a fixed rate 125 home loan. At First Plus, there's no application fees, and even the phone call is free, so you've got nothing to lose. Before you close your loan with another lender,
Call First Plus, because we'll beat any deal. Call 1-800-510-PLUS. That's 1-800-510-PLUS. ESPN's coverage of opening day continues. The third uh, game of our opening day triple header from the Bank One Ballpark in Phoenix. We go to the fifth inning. Darrell Kyle against Andy Bennis. Both as the pitching matchup. And right now, leading off in the fifth, Kyle at the plate. He bunted a foul to the catcher's first time, popping it up. This one is a foul off the catcher. Fabregas. One ball and one strike. Coming into this inning, Andy Bennis had 60 pitches, 36 of them for strikes. So he's got that 15, 15 pitches an inning, which is about right. Which is what you want. Going well. Strike two. By the way, we'll be here next to Sunday night. Our first ESPN Sunday night telecast of the year will be right from this ballpark with the San Francisco Giants and these Diamondbacks, Barry Bonds and Matt Williams. We'll go head to head the two former teammates. And it will be Matt Williams' first game, the first weekend of games. They'll play here starting Friday. Matt back in the National League will face the Giants for the first time in a regular season game. I hope you'll join us. That's 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific this Sunday. And the matchup should be a great one. Andy Bennis and the Giants ace young left-hander, Sean Estes. Ooh, Ooh, that was close. That looked like that curveball that uh, he was been working with with Mark Connor. Three and two. Lansing, the leadoff man on deck. It kind of doesn't look like just a, an automatic out up there. Oh, he's got a pretty good stroke. Chokes up a little bit. I notice Andy Bennis is saying his fastball's dropped velocity about three or four miles an hour. He's averaging about 85, 86 this inning. So maybe he's getting just a little bit fatigued because he was hitting 88 to 90, 91 early in the game. He hit that one. Out into center. Devon White, plenty of room. White's got that trademark. When he knows he's got it zeroed in, he just lifts the glove up. And the ball just always lands right it. there. <laughs> Most of the time. Yeah. It's cool though. I like it. It's, yeah, it's very cool. It's kind of the way you do it on foul balls back to the booth. Yeah, that's, that's knocking down. <laughs> Here's a look now the uh, the uh, handicap seating out behind the right field wall. And that's a kind of an odd wire screen out there in the fence. And it kind of worried Larry Walker. Yeah, Larry gave me his critique. He said, you know, Kevin, I can uh, get my hand caught in there in that, in that mesh fence. And uh, he also said the grass in the outfield right now, a little bit uneven, a little bit bumpy. That uh, it's not real smooth out there in the outfield. The infield is smooth. But he predicted there uh, might be uh, some errors he's out predicting there. Predicting some bad hops. Yes. One ball, one strike. Oh, you see that pathway from the mound to the home plate area. There's Larry Walker. No errors out there yet. There's also the warning track, and then more grass after the warning track. You get the, the, the warning track that every ballpark has, the sort of the, the cinder track out there. But then the last eight feet from the warning track to the wall is more grass. And that's, that's you don't see that in I've the never seen parks. that. I've never seen that. I say I don't it's think another I warning. It's a warning to a warning. I saw <laughs> an old uh, postcard from who knows when, 50 years ago, at the municipal stadium in Cleveland. It had something like that. But Buck Showalter had a lot to do with the design of, of the infield and the outfield. And it takes a lot out of some of the things that from the past that we talked about. Well, he says that the, the second bit of grass, he says, when you when you leave the warning track and you're on grass again, you know two steps and a leap. <laughs> he says it'll be, it'll be depends safe. on who you are. <laughs> if it's deep on white, it might be a half a step, and he he's got a longer stride. <laughs> it's all relative. <laughs> or if you're you're some guy from another ball club <laughs> who's used to having two steps and a leap when you hit the dirt. Exactly. Right? <laughs> Condition the other way. He has some guys coming in the road who are leaping eight feet from the wall. <laughs> Jay Bell throws out Lansing. Lansing is now one for three. Two down. That, uh, what we're talking about the warning track and then more grass between the warning track and the wall. You know, part of it is for them, they play this offense to their advantage because they play 81 games here. So I think Buck designed some of this so. His ball club will have a little bit of an advantage playing the, uh, the track the way it is and the angles and the 
nooks and crannies. Are they nooks or crannies? Well, some of them are nooks and some of them are crannies. <laughs> Please. Ellis breaks the hitter. He's grounded. I'm, I'm that predictable, man. First time we've ever worked together. I know. He already knows what I'm going to say. <laughs> I've listened to you a lot. Though. <laughs> one ball, one strike to Burks. I read your two. book. <laughs> I'm so glad you brought that up. <laughs> one ball, one strike to Burks. Larry Walker would be next, so Bennis would like to end the inning right here. But also, Ellis Burks, a very dangerous hitter. Hey, he'd like to get through this inning and see if he'll go one more. Bell, and that's the inning. Seven in a row, and 13 out of the last 14 retired by Bennis. Halfway through it, one nothing Colorado. Introducing the Tustin Auto Center's Satisfaction Guaranteed Used Car Program. A multi-million dollar inventory to choose from, and every certified used vehicle from dealers in the Tustin Auto Center is meticulously inspected and comes with a limited warranty. Now how's that for product confidence? Just look for the satisfaction guaranteed seal. Great used cars and the peace of mind in knowing your satisfaction is guaranteed by longtime neighborhood dealers you trust. The Tustin Auto Center. Join two-time Heisman Trophy winner Archie Griffin, Pro Hall of Famer Paul Warfield, Coach Earl Bruce, and the NFL's Vinny Clark and other Buckeye greats at the first-ever Ohio State University Legends Golf Tournament, Monday, April 6th, at the prestigious Pelican Hills Golf Club in Newport Beach. This event is open to all Buckeye alumni and enthusiasts, with proceeds going to the OSU Southern California Scholarship Fund and Children's Hospital of Orange County. Call 714-726-5071 for more information. When the pharaohs of ancient Egypt entered the pyramid, they took everything they would ever want or need with them. That way, they would never have the urge to leave. The pharaohs weren't stupid. Call Luxor for reservations. Mental intimidation, environmental health hazards. Is that what it takes to make our favorite athletic shoes? Outside the Lines travels to Southeast Asia to find out. Made in Vietnam, the American sneaker controversy. Outside the Lines, Thursday at 7.30 on ESPN. Now, time for a Bank One ballpark fact. 1.3 million square feet inside of this arena, and it can hold eight America West arenas if they build them. Right inside of here, speaking of uh, which, there is the, the, the very same America West Arena, the home of the Phoenix Suns and the uh, Phoenix uh, Coyotes of the NHL and uh, the Suns of the NBA. And it's just right across the parking lot from the Bank One ballpark. And the views of those two sporting venues seen from Snoopy 2. That's a foul ball hit by Kareem Garcia against Daryl Kyle. Here it is. Now in its 11th year of providing aerial television coverage of sporting and special events, the MetLife Blimp Snoopy 2. Looking for Snoopy 1 and the Snoopy 2 at future sporting events throughout 1998. And they'll be there. And we hope that they'll be with us numerous times here in 1998 as we bring you Major League Baseball. The ninth season of coverage on ESPN. Kareem Garcia. One ball and one strike to count. George Fabregas and Eddie Diaz will follow. The, the big question right now still remains who is going to provide the offense after Matt Williams in that lineup? And they're hoping that Kareem Garcia will emerge. Right, he had 20 home runs in Albuquerque. And he's been a power hitter ever since he came into the Dodger organization. Right to second. Mike Lansing, and there is one away. Well, we were told this is a hitter's ballpark, and certainly it may well end up being that, but a real testament to the skills of Daryl Kyle and Andy Bennis. I mean, they have shut hitters down on both lineups yeah, until now. Well, we're talking about two number one starters, two aces. Kyle and Bennis are both throwing very similar ball games. Kyle came in this inning, had 57 pitches, 32 for strength. Here's Fabregas, and he takes ball one. 
He hit into an inning-ending double play in the second. One of two inning-ending double plays into which the Diamondbacks have hit. There's a still got curveball. A, still got a good curveball, and his fastball is moving. Larry Walker touched on that earlier in the day, how his ball never, no, doesn't do the same thing twice. That's why he's so tough to hit off of. The curve misses. Two and one. Well, it's interesting. He told Frank Funk, did Daryl Kyle, when he got to camp in Tucson, he said, you know, I'm always terrible in spring training, especially early in the spring. And then the first game he pitched, he faced San Francisco in Tucson and gave up six runs in the first inning. <laughs> and it kind of set the tone for his spring. I mean, he didn't have very many uh, sharp outings in the spring. But now he's put it all together. As he works into the fifth inning of this game with a three hit shutout going. That is his second walk allowed. And it brings up the young uh, Eddie Diaz. John, one of the things that Daryl Kyle, one of the guys he gives credit to for last year was Larry Durker because Larry Durker, manager of the Astros, gives responsibility back to his players, kind of from the old school. And Daryl took it upon himself to learn how to hold runners and go longer and deeper into the game and not always look for help. And that, that's a credit to, to Larry Durkin. That's ball one to Diaz. But how strong has Kyle been in this game tonight? Not one outfielder has caught a fly ball yet behind him. I mean, nobody's hit the ball to the outfield other than the, the, the singles that have reached the outfield. Three of them. And that goes right with the movement that Larry Walker said that Kyle has. The ball just from the left-handers at two seamers goes down and away. And it's back out of play. Throws a four seamer up and in. It's a lot of ground balls, and he has a strikeout curveball. Still throwing 88 to 92 in this inning, so he's still throwing very, very well. And that's what I like to see at Coors Field. A lot of balls on the ground. Absolutely. Keep it out of the air. Yeah, it's one thing to throw 90, 91 with a straight fastball, but when you got movement and, and tailing movement, especially away from the left-handers and into the right-handers, you will get a lot of ground balls. Inside to the curveball. Two and one to Diaz. Andy Bennis, the pitcher, is on deck. One out and a run of it first here in the fifth inning. One to nothing. Colorado is leading as you see the, the score box up in the upper left hand corner of the screen. Always gives it a score, the count, the game situation. Run of it first base. 69 pitches. Probably go 90 to 100 in this game as well. As far as pitch count. Three and one account, although Don Baylor's kind of from the old school too. I asked Baylor about that before the game. He says, uh, I'm not gonna put any pitch count. Good, good. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> I am. Because he's fine. He threw 99 pitches in his last outing of the spring. Well, we talked about that between innings, John, years ago. Guys would come out opening first start of spring training for three or four innings. Now a lot of them just throw two innings. Oh. A soaring pop up foul behind the plate. Manland, on number two. Two down. Now let's get an update from Gary Miller. John, you got a pitcher's duel there between Kyle and Bennis. How about Kurt Schilling? A year ago, he had two shutout, eight shutout innings and a two-hitter. He did it to the Mets. Tim Spear had the only two hits, struck him out, then got Ardonias, then Dennis Cook will be thrown out in a nice play by Scott Rowland. 13 scoreless innings between the Mets and Phils for New York. Finally scored in the 14th. Schilling an outstanding day. Belcher beat Mike Messina. Todd Stottlemyre beat Ramon Martinez. Back to you. All right, Gary. Yeah, so there were some uh, outstanding performances today. Also some... Uh, some big scores today. There's that slide step. 89 mile an hour fastball on the slide step. Try to go quick to the plate to keep the runner at first base on us. The Fabregas is not a real fast runner, is he? No, Daryl's just making sure that, you know, let Fabregas know that he knows he's there. I'm checking his stolen base total from last year. It's not like he never stole. He stole, he stole once. Hit hard, but right to Castillo. The four-sided second, Lansing covering. Fabregas is gone, and that's the inning. We're heading to the sixth inning. Walker, Bichette, Castillo. one nothing Rockies. Yes. What's the
the number one ranked minivan by car and driver? Montana from Pontiac. The rugged minivan with seating for eight. Pick you boys up same time tomorrow? Life is more exciting in Montana by Pontiac. Now's the time to roll into Sears during our spring tire and wheel sale because you can save $20 to $60 on a set of four select Michelin, Bridgestone, Trail Handler, or Viper tires. Plus, save an extra 10% off sale prices on all Z-Racing custom wheels when you buy tires, too. This sale ends soon, and the clock is ticking. So get in, get tires, and get rolling. Sears Auto Center. Golf's not hard with Tiger Woods and the Air Zoom TW. Today's topic, tee height. I like to tee up my ball just above the club head. Experiment, and you'll find a tee height that's right for you. ESPN's opening day special is brought to you by Nike. There's the overhang out there over the center field wall and of course the pool here at the Bank One Ballpark and Spa. <laughs> Come out and see a weekend series and uh, get a massage. <laughs> get some uh, hot tub action. Here's Larry Walker, and uh, time to get serious. Andy Bennett's facing the big sluggers in the Rocky batting order, and they're awfully big. Larry Walker swinging at the slider and, and missing, and it is 0-1. Walker has grinded a second, and he's been called out on strikes. And this is an important inning for Andy Bennett because he came into this inning with 76 pitches. And this is the heart of the order right here. Could well be his last inning. As Mark Connor, the pitching coach for Arizona, said yesterday, if he gets through six innings, he'd be happy, but he's throwing extremely well right now. Two and one to Larry Walker. Now, Walker showed you something that, that you hadn't realized before the game about where he came up with this wide open stance. Yeah, I asked Larry. So famous now. I asked Larry. A lot of guys talk about uh, right eye, left eye dominant. Which way do you see better? He opened his stance up because he was on the DL in 91. And watched Jose Canseco and said, I'll try that. If it works for Jose, it might work for me, and that's why he stayed with it. Obviously, it worked, it worked very well for him. Pretty well. He just he does see the ball better, so it does have something to do with your eyesight, obviously. He's showing that uh, hard slider down and making it tough on Walker here. Two balls, two strikes. Dante Bichette. Was on deck. I mean, Walker was just in but, another world last year. Well, Larry, you, he told me he used to have a real close stance, wasn't able to get through the inside fastball. That one is hit deep in the right center field toward the pool, but Devon White. That was headed for the spa. Walker tried to send that one on vacation. But Devon White was able to catch up to it. And that's toward the deepest part of this ballpark. Down and got it just a little bit off the end of the bat. That's why that ball wasn't driven out. Just got a little bit off the end of the bat. Yvonne found the second one back there. And right, here's Dante Bichette. Hit that one right out toward the, uh, the vacationers out there. <laughs> out toward the, uh, the bank one ballpark resort area. Dante Bichette, the hitter, grounded a short and single. Matt Williams and uh, Bichette is aboard. Williams is going to have a long throw on that one. Going to have a long throw, but he's capable of making that because he's got a strong arm. And he just looked up, just looked like he looked up just a little too soon. Didn't quite have a handle on the ball. Looked up to see where Bichette. He looked up to see where Bichette was. It was a good crossover, three, four steps. He's got it right on the line there. And handcuffed him. Doesn't make too many errors. He's a gold lover, a four time gold lover. Don't see that happen too often. 
So now here is Vinny Castillo. One to nothing, Colorado. And what that can do right there, John, is make Venice throw to another hitter and work a little bit longer and, and get his pitch count up. There's a shot. Deep left center. Brady going back, back to the wall. It's gone. A two-run homer for Dante, or rather, Vinny Castilla. Vinny Castilla with the first home run here at the Bank One ballpark, and it just barely made it into the seats out there. The wall seven feet two inches high, and Brady. I don't think got up as high as he was hoping, hitting the wall, and the ball just made it into the seat. Well, Brady in left field thought he had a shot at. He got back to the wall, but he couldn't make the play. And it's like a hanging breaking ball. It been a suit of Vinny Castilla, and he didn't get all of it, but he's so strong he got enough of it. Fabregas sitting outside. The ball is a miss, middle in. That's a flat breaking ball right there, flat sliding. Now Todd Houghton, who had driven in the first run, he takes a strike. Pitch. So it is three to nothing now for the Rockies. Down the pitch selection was fine. He just missed location. He wanted it down and away. He missed middle in and up, and Castilla drove it out of the ballpark. Now, maybe that's the fatigue, right? Exactly. That's what you look for. Last inning, he dropped velocity to 85, 86, where he was hitting 90 the first three innings of the game. Todd Helton hit a double down the left field line, driving a run his first time. There's Vinny Castilla, 40 homers in each of the last two years. 40 homers and 113 RBIs in each of the last two years. And, and by the way, it's worth noting because of where they play their home games and the fact that it's such a great hitter's ballpark. Castilla last year had 21 of his homers in Denver and 19 on the road. That's right. Both, uh, Larry Walker, more home runs on the road than at home. So 29 think, on the road and 20 at home. People for take uh, Colorado for granted. These guys are strong guys. They can hit them out of anywhere. Doesn't matter where it is. Any park in the big leagues, these guys can hit out of. That's a shot deep down the left field line. Brady, a long run, can't get to it. And he'll have to go chase that Karen into the corner out there. A double for Helton, his second double. Well, Helton's gone to left field three times, twice now for doubles, so they're playing right into Helton's hand. That was a hanging breaking ball, and there's no doubt that Venice, in my mind, is getting tired. And Buck is on the phone getting somebody up. And the bullpen has been quiet up till now. Mark Connor is going to be dispatched to the mound now to uh, talk to Bennis and also to uh, help somebody out there. You know, I'm, the, I'm guessing get ready. The, the, the hitters will let you know when you're done. That's that's the biggest thing. You can talk about pitch counts, which we, we do in baseball and in velocities. Those are all good tools. There's a breaking ball. Breaking ball away. And a great try by Brady. That ball, left-hand hitter hitting that ball. The ball is going to tail away toward the left field line. And Brady made the dive and couldn't reach it. Made a nice try. Nice effort. That's in that one of those odd areas out here where that ball landed. There's like a, a corner. Well, that could have rattled around and uh, been a triple. And you're going to see a lot of inside the park home runs in this ballpark and a lot of triples. I think Don Baylor said it. This, this club's going to lead the league in triples because of the angles in the outfield and the caroms. It's going to be tough for the outfielders to defend. And that is also the area where the Rocky, or rather the uh, Diamondback bullpen is situated. And there is activity out there now. Clint Sadowski, a right-hander, is warming up back of Andy Bennis. Two runs are in. And the last three hitters, by the way, Dante Bichette was given credit for an infield hit on that ball dropped by Matt Williams. There's Sadowski. Castilla then homered, and now Helton has doubled. Nancy Perez, the hitter, shows bunt and takes the ball. Well, I think if Matt had caught the ball, he's strong enough with his throwing arm, he would have made that throw, but I'm sure Bichette will take the base hit. And there were no uh, phone calls to the official <laughs> scorer from the Rockies dugout. I'm sure Matt will say he, you know, he would have made that play. There's a bunt, and if it stays fair, it's a hit. It is foul. Well, that is the right thing to do that Matt Williams did because if he did make that that particular play, Perez would have beaten that out. So your only bet is to let that thing roll and hopefully roll foul. And it did. Now let me ask you this though: you got the eighth place hitter coming up, and then the pitcher. Here's Perez, a tough switch hitter who bats lefty. 
You got a man in scoring position. Why is he bunting? I'm swinging the bat there myself. Now Matt was playing a little bit back, but still, then you got you got Kyle coming up, or excuse me, Manwaring coming up. He was a double play guy, not a great hitter. But Nephew took uh, took a chance because he saw Williams playing deep. Well, if I'm Don Baylor, I want him knocking that guy in, right? Yeah, Nephew's ne Nephew is a pretty good hitter. He's a he's a 280, 290 hitter, so it's not like he's an out in the line. Three runs up, and I'm sure that's what Jackie Moore and Don Baylor are talking about right there. Hit 291 last year in half a season with the Rockies. Two and two to count. Popped up. Matt Williams near third. Out number two. Helton still at second base. You see now that I see that he popped up. <laughs> I'm, I'm changing Should have my Yeah. It was a great no, I think I think Perez just saw Williams back a little bit with a runner in scoring position. Matt's going to play back and take the single away. So you can't have it both ways. So Perez said, oh, I'll drop one down with one out. Maybe I have first and third and man wearing out. Maybe they'll hit and run or something. Yeah. Here's man wearing. Foul back to the screen. Also, Perez, who beaten out the bunt for a hit, capable of stealing second base. Absolutely. All and one the count to Kurt Manwaring. He's hit into a force play and he's grounded out to second. Opening day 1998. The Rockies have never been more excited about their chances in the National League West. Devon White and that is the end. But two runs on the Vinny Castilla home run. And now the Rockies have opened it up just a bit. Colorado three and the Diamondbacks still looking for their first run. Castilla hit 40 again last year. Most companies that make canopies for our nation's jet fighters look to this oil company for a critical component to make them bulletproof. So what kind of gasoline do you think this company would make? You'd be right. Sitco. When it counts. Here's something you should never do with your eyeglasses unless they're made from Flexon. Even after bending and twisting, Flexon frames still look and fit great. Feel free to fall asleep in your glasses. Feel free to squeeze your Flexon frames. Feel free to kid around. Flexon frames, durable, comfortable, light. Ask for them by name. Flexon by Marshawn. A knife in stone. It was a knife of mythic proportions. And no one could resist the pull of the knife. And then one day came the answer. It takes a big juicy Outback steak to unlock the true potential of the legendary Outback Steak Knife. Just what I was looking for. Outback Steakhouse. No rules, just right. Now if I could only find the fork in the road. Demanded better training facilities. Insisted on new uniforms and equipment. Held out for hundreds of free tickets. These guys will stop at nothing to get whatever they can for the Boys and Girls Clubs of America. Major League Baseball charities and the Boys and Girls Clubs of America, giving kids a world of opportunities. Now the Rockies three and the Diamondbacks nothing. Daryl Kyle's got a three hit shutout going as we go to the sixth inning, and it's the top of the order for. The Diamondbacks now. Meanwhile, there's a, a happy young man in left field. He brought his glove, and he's got the first home run hit in the bank one ball. That's called preparation right there. He brought his glove and made the play. Congratulations. There's a bunt by Devon White. And he Castillo. He got it at first base. Well, a nice idea by White. They need base runners. But Vinny Castillo was able to make the play. Now here's an update from Gary Miller. John, you got the last game of opening day earlier today, a game that wouldn't end. It was 4-4 into 13 when Alex Diaz finally broke through against the Astros. Tim Bogart couldn't handle the bleeder. Javier would follow with a three-run double. They'd score five in their half of the 13th and win that one 9-4. Other tight games, Mets were scoreless until the 14th. They win it one to nothing on an Alex Castillo base hit. All right. Yeah, that quite a game at Shea Stadium today. The Mets and the Phillies. Nobody's scoring until the 14th inning. 
The Giants today in that ball game with Houston, by the way, they went 13 innings. The last nine and the third innings were pitched by the Giants' bullpen. Sean Estes got knocked out in the fourth inning, and the bullpen never gave up a run. That's why some of these teams take 12 men to start the season, because their starters aren't ready to go very long into the game. Well, using his bullpen for nine and a third today, he may that 12 may not be enough. <laughs> and we'll see the Giants tomorrow at the Astrodome. Oral Hershiser will get the start there against the Astros. Mike Hampton, who was uh, their ace left-hander last year, won 15 games for them. Barry Bonds, Jeff Kent, J.T. Snow, the Giants, and the Astros with wow. Bagwell Biggio and of course Moise Salu and. Daryl Kyle has still got that breaking ball pretty going. Pretty good, there. pretty good sequence by Daryl Kyle. The pitch before the last one, he dropped down with the curveball. Then, then he came back and with the two strikes with his punch out curveball. That over the top curveball and bottom drops mm. out of it. Mm. See where Man Waring catches it right off the top of the ground and cross home plate. Jay Bell swung over the top of it. Jay Bell 0 for 2 with a walk. Two down. Here's Travis Lee. Lee belts one. Deep in the right field. Walker turns. Oh, and Lee is three for three, and he has the Diamondbacks' first homer, their first run. Then the guy knows how to make an entrance. Well, we talked about him being an impact player, a guy that we want to watch. This season, definitely a rookie of the year candidate. The first ball, I believe, it was a fastball middle in, and he just turned on it with a smooth swing. Gets through the ball. It's the first home run in Diamondback history. Now Matt Williams, just off the outside, and it's ball one. Man, Travis Lee, this is the first. It's not just the first game for the Diamondbacks in their new ballpark. This is the first game for Travis Lee in any ballpark in the big leagues. And he has two singles and now a home run. He's got most of the offensive firsts for the Diamondbacks. Well, it goes back to why would you spend $10 million on a college player that you don't even have a team yet? <laughs> they signed him two years ago. Well, Travis has explained it very well for us tonight. Now Williams, but that's the wrong part of this ballpark to hit it. High in the air and an easy out. Ellis Burks. Makes the grab. Matt Williams 0 for 3. But Travis Lee has put the, the D-backs on the board. His first Major League home run. 3 to 1, Colorado. Air Canada has more non-stops between the USA and Canada than any other airline. When sports cream, when legs are sore. When backs ache, when muscles hurt, why sports cream? Rubbing it in brings fast pain relief. No medicine is smell. Why sports cream? Because it works. How do you separate knowledge from noise? Call Invesco. 38 no-load funds. 65 years experience. A global perspective. You should know what Invesco knows. No, I don't need vinyl siding. This is an apartment. I can't get away from these salesmen. I'm Jim. Hi, Jim. This is for you. Hello. And make sure you deal with a pro. Like your GMC dealer. It's closer than you think. Here, let's take a look. You want the genuine article? GMC is a great selection. And with 1.9% APR GMAC financing for up to 36 months, it's easier than ever to get your hands on the real thing. Skip the wannabes and see a nice GMC dealer near you. Oh, no, no, look at it. I'm John Miller with Kevin Kennedy. The third game of our triple header tonight. The uh, history of the Diamondbacks begins here. And Travis Lee, I mean, this guy, <laughs> highly touted, gets their first hit. And then now their first home run. And he's also got their first three-hit game, but that's three and counting. Well, I guess uh, scouts have a pretty good idea of what this guy could do. They said he's an impact player, and he certainly showed that tonight. Three base hits, big home run, beautiful swing. Travis Lee, and uh, it's the, the future for the Diamondbacks. And uh, 
the guy has made a statement here tonight. Vinny Castilla also with a home run the actual first home run in this ballpark a two run shot and uh, by virtue of that two run Castilla homer the Rockies lead the game by two three to one and Andy Bennis is still out there Daryl Kyle the hitter in right field Kareem Garcia and Kyle is 0 for 3 the bullpen is busy for the uh, Diamondbacks even as Bennis is working here and we are in the seventh inning from Phoenix Arizona it's a, a beautiful evening but a cool evening here they've had some some very chilly weather here what are the odds that it would hit 90 degrees in Baltimore at game time today and here in the Valley of the Sun it's, it's probably in the 50s and there's ball one to Mike well, I hate to say it hand. but is it El Nino <laughs> Because in L.A. it's raining all the time and they're coming right through Arizona in the cold weather. <laughs> Up the middle. And a base hit for Lansing. Lansing, who got the first hit in this ballpark, leading off in the first inning. He hit the second hit pitch of the game from Andy Bennis for a base hit. He gets his second hit. Travis Lee got the first Diamondbacks hit. By the way, I mean, the Diamondbacks only have four hits in the game. And Lee has three of them. Well, Buck Showalter knows better than any of us why he put Travis Lee third, and that's why we brought him up today. I'm a little bit surprised Bennis is still in the game. He had 96 pitches come into this inning, and Mark Connor said he wanted to get through six innings with him, but maybe he wants to stretch him out. He only had 13 innings again in spring training, and maybe Andy talked him into, so let me go one more, get stretched out a little bit for my next start. And also there is a bit of history between the Rockies and Andy Bennis. In 1996, remember, his first year with the Cardinals, he started very poorly, was 1-7 and seven at the start of that year. The seventh loss was to Colorado. And Don Baylor said some things about Bennis that he didn't like. That's a strike on two to Ellis Burks. Baylor said that if the Rockies would, would stay close to Bennis in that game, they would win. That's right. Well, Bennis, three days later when the series was still going on, Asked Tony La Russa if he could pitch in relief that night. He did and got the save. And then proceeded to win 17 of his last 20 that season. Then, of course, last year he got a hit by a pitch by Astacio. He broke his finger and put him out for the season. And uh, for Baylor, for his part, he said, uh, <laughs> he said, listen, after I made that comment in 96, he won 10 in a row. He said, I'm not going to say any more and get him riled up again. It was Astacio. He will not pitch here tomorrow night. He'll pitch Thursday and then pitch the home opener for the Rockies. Too far inside. But I'm wondering, uh, Kevin, I mean, what you said it made me think of it, that he went in and told Mark Conner, hey, Very I, possible. I should go back out. It might also have something to do with this thing about the Rockies, right? Yeah, I don't think he wants to come out of a game where uh, he made really one mistake. That was the hanging breaking ball to Castilla. Matt Williams. He dropped the ball at third base on a, on a ground ball by Bichette that was actually ru ruled a base hit. Probably should have been an error. So Bennis probably said, hey, let me go back out there. Only made one or two mistakes really at the whole game. But uh, this inning could blow up on him. Get the big hitters up now. The power's up with Burks and Larry Walker on deck. One out, Lansing at first base. Three to one for Colorado. Of course, I mean, Bennis is the man in this rotation. I mean, he's a man. He's setting the tone, and uh, I'm sure he said to Mark, you know, that, that's a communication you have from player to manager, manager to player. You have that kind of communication, especially with your aces. Down the left field line, that is fair. It hit the chalk line. Lansing to third. He's going to be waved home. Here comes Bell's relay. Over throws. Dennis backs it up. He throws down to second base, and Burks is safely back. Dave Bell overthrowing Fabregas and hitting Andy Bennis backing up the play instead and it is 4-1 for the Rockies. Well, just with the fear that you expressed Kevin is starting to be realized now. Yeah it started really in the fifth inning. It was a breaking ball that Perks turned on landed right on the chalk. 
See Brady going to the corner. Make a pretty good throw to Bell, and Bell had a chance to get Lansing if he throws a strike. He threw it over Man wearing his head. As a matter of fact, if he threw the ball down and, and did throw a strike, he would have gotten the runner out. So he got the pitching change coming here. Clint Sadowski coming on as Dennis Defarge. Just scoped out a zero tedium interface. Suddenly my phone modem's paleolithic. I'm buzzing the hive in nanoseconds. Downloading macro files and micro time that organizes the totally vast fast. This is no scanty band. It's digital cyber fiber. Cox has high band with Digerati on call. Even for a newbie, there's not a pixel of tedium in sight. Biggest night in sports entertainment. The baddest man on the planet. On March 29th, the two greatest attractions in pay-per-view history collide in one colossal event as Iron Mike returns to the ring. WrestleMania. Tyson. Live Sunday, March 29th, only on pay-per-view. It's the return of Iron Mike on Cox Cable. Don't go there, Tyrell. No, Tyrell. What's the score? Tyrell should have bounced outside to the six. Yeah, man, but what's the score? Have I ever told you the secret of football? Many times. Is 15% physical and 85% mental. If you're bigger and faster here, you will defeat him. So what's the score? There's only one important piece of information in the world, the one you want. Seagate hardware and software. Information the way you want it. After last year's early elimination, Team USA is back with a vengeance. Andre Agassi leads the U.S. team against Kafelnikov and the Russians in the first round of the Davis Cup. Singles action begins Friday at 1, only on ESPN. Bank One Ballpark in Phoenix. And now the Rockies trying to take command of this game in the late innings, leading 4-1, to one, and Andy Bennis... Trying to stretch it out, but without any success, and he's looking rather frustrated right now. So now, Clint Sadowski in out of the bullpen to face Larry Walker with Ellis Burks at second base. Young right-hander, last year was with the Pittsburgh Pirates. Ball one. Now, Walker is hitless in this game. Bennis did a great job with Walker, and uh, most of the power hitters for the first five innings and until. Castilla hit the home run in the sixth. Now Burks with an RBI double here in the seventh. Called a strike. One ball and one strike to Larry Walker. Dante Bichette is on deck. The runner at second is Ellis Burks. The nine hits. Uh, actually, that's not Burks. Now that's uh, Curtis Goodwin who has come in as a pinch runner for Ellis Burks. Walker has a base hit and Goodwin who has extraordinary speed will easily score. So Larry Walker gets his first hit and his first RBI of 1998 and now it is five to one and all five of those runs are charged to the record of Andy Bennis. This looks like a two seam fastball to try to throw away to Larry Walker but look how he leaves it out over the plate. Larry just gets enough of it a little bit off the end of the bat but he's so strong. He gets it through the seam on the right side of the infield. Good one. Pinch running because Burks has had some hamstring problems this game. Now Dante Bichette. Going back to the bag at first is Larry Walker. Bichette has been credited with two hits, although one of them uh, could well have been called an error against Matt Williams. Pretty good action on that. Uh, he's got good movement on his pitches. Good sinker, good slider. There's a little change up. He's a ground ball type pitcher. And he got the ground ball by Walker, but again, right through the right side of the infield. He got into 45 games for the Pirates last year, all in relief. The shed helped him out of that one, all in two. He pitched 52 innings and had 51 strikeouts for Gene Lamont's ball club last year. 3.63 ERA originally came up with the Detroit Tigers in 1995. 
is in Lamont, Oklahoma. Walker running, and the right side of the infield, wide open, base hit. And Bichette, you think of him as a big power guy, but he does that extremely well. Well, Don Bailey, you mentioned earlier, John, likes to run, hit and run. He's not just a power-oriented manager. He likes to do some things, put some people in motion, and it's not really a surprise that Larry Walker's in motion right here. Catcher sitting outside. Real, sh real short swing right there by Dante Bichette. The right side of the infield is wide open. Eddie Diaz, the second baseman, went over to cover. And Bichette just did a, a little oh. bouncer right through the wide open. Yeah, John, right here's a guy that hits 40 home runs, making a lot of money, but he just takes a short swing and executes, does the job, and that's how you win ball games. That's how you win pennants. Walker at third, Bichette at first, and Castilla drives one deep into center. Going back is White. This one is... It is a home run. It hit just <laughs> above the yellow line. It is a three-run homer. And actually, the umpire who made the call first was the first base umpire, Dana Demuth. So, the second base umpire, Darling, the third base umpire, Pancino, they were they were not quite sure. Well, one thing they're going to have to do, the umpires, is sprint out there to center field. I mean, they're going to really have to work in this ballpark to make sure that they can see that yellow line in center field because it has to go over that line for the home run. This is a hanging breaking up, uh, up in the zone. Full, ex full extension by Vinny Castilla. And it does hit above the yellow line. Even though it came back in the field, that is a home run above the yellow line. The hitter's background, the tarp up there above the yellow line is, is out of play. So Vinny Castilla is putting on a show. His second home run, he has five RBIs. It is eight to one Colorado. As Todd Helton comes up. So Castilla, 40 homers in each of the last two years. He's got two already this year. And the Rockies have gone about the business now of spoiling the big party here at the Bank One ballpark. Helton doubled home the first run in the ballpark's history. And now he has drawn a walk in this spot. And with Perez coming up, let's go to Gary Miller. John, let's recap the long balls on opening day 98. We'll start with the American League. And a big day in the kingdom was our game right before this one in which four Mariners homered. Sandy Alomar, the only homer for Cleveland, but that Mariner bullpen caved in again, and it was 10 to 9 with Cleveland winning that one. Box at the first ever home run in Devil Ray history. The Tigers beat up on them, though. Ventura in a big slugfest for the White Sox, who scored nine in Texas. In the National League, Wally Joyner hit the first home run of 1998. Pokey Reese tied a record for shortstops with four errors. The Reds slaughtered by San Diego 10 to two. McGuire hit his first opening day homer of the 90s. John, back to you. All right, you know, and Charles Johnson homered for Florida today and also made an error. I mean, talk about the error is the unusual part. Talk about a change. I mean, Johnson is apparently now good hit, no field. <laughs> then probably have to start putting in a defensive replacement for him late in the game. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Nancy Perez, the hitter, he's 0 for 2 with a walk. Todd Helton at first base. And one out here in the seventh inning, a five run inning for the Rockies. They must feel like they're back at Coors Field all of a sudden. Well, this park is starting to play small, isn't it? That's what the guys were talking about. Walker yeah. said he hit one in the upper deck in batting practice, and he said that I think there's going to be a lot of home runs in this ballpark, and we're starting to see that now. Yeah, especially uh, lots of home runs by Benny Castilla. <laughs> I mean, neither one of them was quite a tape measure shot. The one to left field just made it into the first row, and this one hit a top the uh, the center field wall just above the yellow line that uh, center field wall by the way is 25 feet high out there there's the line with the hitters background above that and it's just that little ledge there and it hit right on the ledge above those two pillars how many ballparks you start talking about the outfield wall you start talking about ledges and pillars no and uh, and nooks and crannies we yeah. already covered that thing Nooks and crannies. That's more we've, advanced, we've advanced to ledges and pillars now. Well, Fenway Park has nooks and crannies. <laughs> the Bank One Ballpark has ledges and, and pillars. pillars. Yeah. That's huge. And girders. <laughs> Lots of girders. 
And there are those pillars out there in center field. What about beans? Yeah, beans. <laughs> Brent Brady, and that is the second out. Now the ninth batter of the inning will come up. Kirk Manwaring with Helton still over there at first base. Clint Hurdle, the first base coach with the Rockies. 49,000 plus here. The bank one ball play. There's Clint Hurdle. One time uh, phenom. Although it never really happened in a, in a big way for him in the big league. No, it didn't. One strike to count to Manwaring. He's 0 for 3. Eight runs and 12 hits for the Rockies now. He scored one in the second, two in the sixth on the Castilla homer, and now five here in the seventh to open it up. Eight to one in the seventh inning. Sadowski's. Uh John Velocity is just good, 88 to 92, but you can see, watch his head fly toward first base and he opens up that front side too soon. The hitter sees the ball very, very well. Caught at second by Diaz, and that ends the inning. Nine men bat and five of them score. And now Daryl Kyle must be really enjoying the decision to come to the Rockies. So he put eight runs on the board for him. After the seven, eight one, Colorado. A snowflake falls at the far end of history. And that snowflake, we'll call him Steve, winds up as part of a droplet of water. And one day, that droplet, Steve's droplet, could wind up in a brewery where a man you'll never meet discovers the perfect temperature to frost brewed beer. And like that, Steve is in a Coors Light can, and then a tray, and a cup. And now, he's here with you. So I ask you, gentle stranger, do not spill, Steve. Coors Light! The nest is empty. Your work is done. So powerful. It's time to kick back and have some fun. So agile. You've got the car now. DeVille with the North Star system. For who you are now, you're making whoopee. DeVille, for the time of your life. Oh, look at you. Even with a whole new world of toothbrushes, you still may not reach the places between teeth where germs that can cause the gum disease gingivitis breed. But with Listerine, you can. Listerine is the one brand, the only brand, clinically proven to flow into the tiny spaces between teeth to kill germs and help prevent gum disease. Germs can hide from your toothbrush, but not from Listerine. Don't let a good mouth go bad. ESPN's opening day special is brought to you by Conseco, where their goal is to help you protect wealth, create wealth for life. And by germ-killing Listerine. Don't let a good mouth go bad. 50,179 announced as the attendance here at the Bank One Ballpark for the uh, first game in the young history of the expansion Arizona Diamondbacks, but the, the game belongs to the Colorado Rockies right now. They lead 8-1 to one in their prize new pitcher. Daryl Kyle, working on a four-hitter and a huge lead now, delivers ball one to Brent Brady. The uh, Rockies' bullpen is busy, meanwhile. So Kyle may not be around this ballgame well, much longer either. Well, reason for that, he's got number one, an 8-1 to one lead. Number two, he's got 82 pitches, and the seven run lead. Get him off and get him out of there in a good note. Maybe he'll end up around 100 pitches, 100 pitches or so. And uh, hopefully, for Don Baylor's sake, they can hold a seven run lead. But Darrell's done his job so far tonight. The only guy he's not been able to handle is Travis Lee, who is three for three against him. Andy Bennis, yeah, he did a pretty good duel with Kyle until the. Uh, Really late going. It appeared obvious that the uh, he was not the same pitcher by the uh, the end there. Yeah, the middle of the ball game, about the fifth inning, is when he started losing velocity, and you could see his legs starting to get tired, and the ball was up a little bit. 
If the ball's up to good hitters, they're going to beat you. And Danny Castilla has done that tonight. Two home runs. Brady fouls it back to the screen. Three balls and two strikes. Well, against Kyle, Travis Lee is three for three with a home run. And the rest of the Diamondbacks batting order is one for 17. Brady pops this one foul and back out of play. Kareem Garcia will follow and George Fabregas. Now, even though they got Travis Lee, I'm, I, I'm pretty impressed. <laughs> very, very, very. And uh, they got Matt Williams and Jay Bell. This does look like it's going to be a ball club that's going to come back from any eight to one deficits. No, their lineup is not the, the same as the Colorado Rockies, that's for sure. Once you get past uh, Matt Williams, you've got some unproven players like Brady and Green Garcia, Edwin Diaz. Fabregas getting a chance to, to start and play every day now. Here's a high foul. That will go back out of play off the left field line. Three and two is the count to Brent Brady. A single and a double play ball. Really the three proven players in that lineup for Arizona, Devon White and Jay Bell and Matt Williams. Other than that, you got young guys. Center field, Curtis Goodwin. He stays in the game in place of Ellis Burks, and he takes it, and there is one away. The Dome, they had the big ceremonies before the ball game to commemorate the opening, and they, they opened it literally. And uh, it takes about five minutes for the Dome to completely open up, and the, uh, the cameras were much in evidence. Everybody wanted to record this for posterity. Fireworks. A, uh, also a celebration before the ball game. Officially retiring for this ballpark and this fran franchise. The, the number of Jackie Robinson, number 42. And uh, among those, as you see the, uh, the number posted out there, it's the first retired number in Diamondbacks history. Brady List, another pop-up, foul. Coming over manually, he's got it. And uh, uh, Kareem Garcia, by the way, Brady had already flied out. Now Kareem Garcia has fouled out. Daryl Kyle still throwing fastball, 92 miles an hour here in the seventh inning, so he's still strong. But this will most likely be his last last inning of work tonight. And we saw Chuck McElroy, a left-hander, warming up in Don Baylor's bullpen down the right field line. Two down, and George Fabregas. And Willie Mays was here. Frank Robinson. Great Hall of Famers who uh, took part in the uh, retiring of the Jackie Robinson number out there in left field. Robin Young was here, Harmon Killebrew. Pretty good group right there. Yeah. Frank Robinson was my skipper back in 1979 in Rochester. Taught you everything you know. Everything I know about <laughs> being a broadcaster. <laughs> Well, that's what I was My next question is whether, whether or not Frank would want to uh, take credit for that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Two balls, no strikes, or three balls, no strikes, not a Fabregas. There's McElroy, the left-hander, up in the bullpen for Colorado. Rockies actually start here with three lefties in their bullpen. Kyle issues his third walk of the game. Two down, Fabregas at first. More baseball tomorrow night. A Wednesday night baseball doubleheader. First, we go indoors for the Astrodome. The Giants and the Astros, Hershiser and Hampton, Bonds and uh, Bagwell at the Dome, 7.30 Eastern. Then, opening night for the Yankees. Andy Pettit scheduled against Chuck Finley. That's quite a matchup. At the uh, newly renovated Edison International Field in Anaheim, the Yanks and the Anaheim Angels at 10.30 Eastern, 7.30 Pacific, right here on ESPN. Chuck Knobloch will make his Yankees debut. And what a lineup the Yanks uh, appear to have put together. Knobloch at the top, Jeter, and then about four or five cleanup hitters. They there. are very, very deep. Knobloch really makes that whole lineup go. A great trade for the Yankees. Here's Edwin Diaz. He has popped a short and fouled out to the catcher. Two down, Fabregas at first. We're in the last of the seventh inning. Foul ball 
back out of play. The pitcher's spot is due up next, and uh, Chris Jones has come out on deck. Well, this is the guy, John, right here that Daryl Kyle wants to end this, this game for him on is Edwin Diaz. They don't want to get to a pinch hitter and then Don Baylor have to make the decision to let him face one more to get out with seven complete innings. This is the guy he wants to finish up on. He's getting his pinch count up there around 100 now. And that's a strike. One ball and two strikes to Diaz. 101 pitches according to uh, Marty Aronoff who is the uh, the final source on pitch counts. Very accurate. <laughs> Let's see. How many is that now, Marty? <laughs> well, Marty says that's 114 now. <laughs> One ball and two strikes. Not so accurate. A breaking ball that time, but he hung it to the right guy. We're going to the eighth inning now. Eight to one, Rocky. Now's the time to roll into Sears because you can save twenty to sixty dollars on a set of four select Michelin, Bridgestone, Trail Handler, or Viper tires. So get in, get tires, and get rolling. Sears Auto Center. While we could give you a lot of reasons to buy performance friction carbon metallic disc brake pads from AutoZone, perhaps the most compelling is this. They simply stop shorter than any brand we've ever tested. Performance friction carbon metallic. Ask for them at AutoZone. Harvey. What do you want? We've got to talk. These kids are mixed up with don't know right from wrong. They're my friends. The people who don't dial 1-800-COLLECT are nobody's friends. 1-800-COLLECT is 10 cents a minute every evening. Really? This isn't a game, kid. You could be saving your parents money. Bobby, you with us or him? You made the right choice, son. 1-800-COLLECT, 10 cents a minute every evening. Now the Nike game summary, 8-1 to one, Colorado leading Arizona, and the Rockies uh, four, five, and six hitters. The guys hitting right behind Larry Walker, eight for 11, two homers, six RBIs, and primarily that's Castilla and Helton. In fact, primarily Castilla doing the, the heavy uh, RBI damage there. And uh, Dante Bichette had gotten three singles in front of those guys. Travis Lee, three for three, the first uh, Diamondback hit, the first Diamondback home run. Daryl Kyle besting uh, Andy Bennis in their personal matchup. And now we got a new pitcher, Scott Brow, has come on. Scott Brow's got an excellent fastball in the 92 93 range. We'll see if he has that tonight in a good hard slider. And then there's 91. He used, used primarily as a setup man. John Vanderwall is the pinch hitter for. Daryl Kyle, as he considered deluxe for the Colorado Rockies, although last year didn't have the, the kind of success that he'd had in the past. John had a tough year. They actually sent him back down to AAA for a while. Came back and made the team in the same time again. Vanderwall is going to turn 32 in, in late April. 1996, he had 16 pinch hits. 1995, he had 28 pinch hits. And here he is 
against the pinch hit walk. A lot of ex-Montreal guys in this Rocky Club. Vanderwall, Lansing, Walker. Who else? It's your story. Uh, I'm, I have Go set, with it, I'm baby. setting you up. <laughs> For the finish. <laughs> Mike Lansing, who, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the former Montreal Expo. There you go. There's several in this club. <laughs> Lansing is two for four in this game. You can't set me back up. Eight runs and 12 hits for the Rockies. And the one run and four hits for Arizona. And Brown misses just a little bit low on the outside. Two balls and a strike. The Diamondbacks had a very uh, fine spring training season, exhibition schedule. But I guess for the, by that same token, uh, the original 1962 New York Mets had a very strong <laughs> exhibition schedule. I mean, you just, you just can't tell much from that. Matt Williams gets the force out at second. And then Diaz take it out of the play. There's one away. ESPN Magazine it comes out every two weeks on Wednesdays. The second edition uh, of the magazine is on the newsstands right now. And the current issue, Michael Jordan on the cover, as you can see right there. Also... Peter Gammons writes about Pedro Martinez. In addition, articles about Omar Vizquel and the tradition of the uh, outstanding Venezuelan shortstops. Also, Levan Hernandez and his brother Orlando El Duque, who recently defected from Cuba. And much, much more. ESPN Magazine on newsstands now. The article about uh, Pedro Martinez and his brothers, Ramon, and of course, who's with the Dodgers, Jesus. And that was a very good reading. Peter Gammons went down there. And uh, they bought the land where they actually grew up. And they have a big farm there. I think they can do that. They can afford to do that. They can afford to do that. <laughs> and, uh, and Pedro still likes to go sit up in this tree when he wants to get away from I it read, all. I read the article. The same tree he used to go sit up in when he was a kid. So money is... Uh, not necessarily happiness. We've seen that story and so many times. Sometimes happiness is just a perch on a familiar tree <laughs> where the, the trade winds blow and uh, one can get away from all of the, the stress of life. <laughs> they blew his way. It a sounded, lot of bills it sounded pretty good way. down there in the article. I, was, I wanted to go to one of the, the fiestas they throw down there. Lansing at first with uh, Goodwin at the plate. Bell gets one at second, and the return by Diaz is not in time. Goodwin is a very fast runner, and he showed that right there. It's a double play combo. Bell gets handcuffed a little bit. And the speed of Curtis Goodwin. Good turn at second base. Going hard in the second base to try to break that up. Mike Lansing. Larry Walker has grounded out to second, struck out, fly deep to right center, and singled home a run. Walker. Was the first man to face Clint Sadowski when he came on in relief of Andy Bennis. And Walker managed to bounce a single in the right field. Very fast infield here, much like Coors Field in Denver. Ooh, a tough slider in under the hands there. Two balls and a strike to Walker. Babe Ruth, 19, 20, and 21. 
two years, the only player to have better numbers in the three triple crown categories than Walker had last year. Walker hit 366, 49 homers, 130 RBIs, and the Babe, the only player in Major League history to have a season with numbers in those three categories better. Well, you could see his ability in Montreal coming back in, the, in 92, 93, when he had a chance to be a free agent. He certainly chose the right place to go, Colorado. But we mentioned, look at those numbers. He, he does a lot of the damage on the road, not just in Colorado. But, you know, I think the real challenge for Walker will be, now he's had that huge breakthrough year, do it again. That's right. I mean, a guy like Barry oh. Bonds has been putting up huge numbers for how many years? eight nine years in a row now. and Larry truly is a pretty humble guy I know he really doesn't want to talk about MVP repeat he doesn't he doesn't really think about that but when you got those kind of numbers everybody's going to talk about it Walker has drawn the base on balls two walks in the inning issued by Brow and now Dante Bichette who's had three singles in this game will come up two on two out eighth inning eight to one the Rockies lead the Diamondbacks here when you look at the but Barry Bonds just does routine. I mean, Barry Bonds had 40 homers, 37 steals last year, 145 walks a year, and, uh, and people are talking about what a what a poor year he had. That's right. Uh, well, you start taking guys like that for granted, and that should never happen. It's a lot of hard work that it's involved. Thing I like about Bonds is he draws a lot of walks. He walks 120, 130 times. Well, that turns into runs. Jeff Kent drove in 121 runs, hitting behind him last year. Luke, shallow left center. Dante Bichette's got his fourth hit of the game. And Goodwin is in to score. Walker goes to third. And now it is nine to one for the Rockies. They've been trying to pound Dante Bichette in all night, and he keeps fighting them off. This is a two-seam fastball, had a little bit of run to it, but again, it was belt high. Dante gets his hands inside it, short swing, stays through it, strong enough to drop it into center field. Eddie Castilla, well, it's been the Diamondbacks coming out party, but it's been Vinny Castilla's night. Three hits. Two homers and five runs battered in. Tristan Fowler, Travis Lee, who's been the, the shining light for the home side this evening with three hits and a home run. Castilla, though, what a night he's had. 15th multiple home run game. The two expansion teams took it on the chin today. This one. Still in progress. They're taking it on the chin out of the D-backs. One on the count. And that's a foul mm. out of play. The, the Tampa Bay Ball Club was beaten 11 to 6 by Detroit, although after trailing by a huge number early, Tampa Bay put a few runs on the board in that ball game. At the Tropicana Field. And there are the out-of-town scores as they are posted here at Bank One Ballpark. That last pitch, John, 92 miles fastball in, that's the one Benny likes to hit out. He loves the fastball. He's as good a fastball hitter and as quick middle in as anybody in the game. And he just missed that, that pitch. Fell it back. Stay away from there in Castillo. Benny has driven in six runs in a game one time in his career. It looks like he'll have to be satisfied with five tonight as he chases that slider in the dirt for strike three. One more run for the Rockies. They lead down nine to one as we go to the last half of the eighth inning. From Phoenix, Eddie Castilla. What a night. When it comes to running a car, there's really only one place to go. National Car Rental, the official car rental company of ESPN. So what are you waiting for? Let's go. Life is unpredictable. Simona! Paolo e Giuliana via con un'altra donna! Lo sapevo! Sometimes you need health insurance. Paolo! Paolo, sono 
Sometimes you need life insurance. And sometimes... Simone, è per te. You need investments for the future. So at the Consigo Companies, our goal is to help you protect wealth, create wealth for life. I'll race anybody, anywhere, anytime. I'm here to win. I hate losing. Even running second. Running second's the first one to lose. There is no compromise. Determination to succeed. And ready to kick. <laughs> These guys here wake up before the alarm clock goes off. If I can hear an engine that is particularly good. Adrenaline. That's the fuel that I live on. I'm a fighter. Never give up. I learned that from my dad. I'm very persistent. I race because I love it. 824 changes to the tax code. They've made it official. You could use some help with your taxes this year. Someone to watch over me. I'm Iron Head Hayward. And I challenge you to get cleaner, more refreshed with zest deodorant body wash. But I ain't had. I was gonna try it. Well, quit crying and get to it. Zest body wash. Get cleaner, more refreshed. Get zestfully clean. Bank One Ballpark, that's the view from out in left field, above the bleachers, with this uh, big new ballpark. A retractable roof dome with a natural surface. No, no astro turf in this ballpark. There's never been a, a dome stadium built without the artificial turf until now. The new pitcher, that's Curtis Lasconic, and Jason Bates has come on to play second base. So Bates will hit in the ninth spot in the order, and uh, Lasconic will hit in Mike Lansing's leadoff spot. And that's a good move to get Lansing out with a big lead because he has had the lower back trouble that we talked about earlier in the ball game. Chris Jones is the pinch hitter for Scott Brow for the Diamondbacks. Chris Jones, well traveled, right handed swinger. Lansing has had that, uh, that stiffness in, in his back talking to one of the uh, Rockies trainers there. Well, it's been a long night actually. Back to the screen. This game uh, started rather late. About 13-14 uh, minutes after the, uh, the listed starting time because of the pregame ceremonies. And it's a, it's a very cool night here. With the, the roof opened up. Here in the uh, Sonoran Desert, it's not. You know, it's, it's not really cool when you score nine runs. You, you, you're taking a lot of time in doing that, and uh, for a guy with a lower back problem, it, it's good that Don Baylor gets him out at this time. I mean, Lansing had a couple of quarter run shots, I believe, about a week or ten days ago. Right on the outside corner, and Chris Jones goes down looking. One away. Now the the Outback Steakhouse pitching summary and Daryl Kyle I mean he was everything that the Rockies were hoping for when they signed him for sure tonight anyway so seven much, innings one run four hits allowed so much for worrying about spring training that's exactly what Daryl Kyle said don't worry about my spring training I'll be ready opening day and he threw that tonight and Devon White with a swinging strike one 92 mile hour fastball there from Lisconic and he is a real hard thrower oh well, he made get back into that closer role. He's been a closer before in the major leagues. DePoto right now. Jerry DePoto is the closer where he saved I believe 16 out of 18 the latter part of last year. But Iskanek can do that job as well. Yeah, that's a ball. Two and one. Now because he's over three I'm going to bring this up. Among the 26 active major leaguers with 40 or more advance in opening days Devon White has the lowest batting average of any of them. Seven for 44. Uh oh. Base hit. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it went up. If, if, <laughs> if I had anything to do with that, <laughs> I guess the only uh, thing I'd have to apologize to Devon White about would be not mentioning it earlier. Better give him your phone number. Before he was already 0 for 3. <laughs> He's 1 for 4. He's now 8 for 45 in his opening day efforts. Pretty good swing. The pitch was up above the belt. Right down the first baseline and crossover step. The left-handed fielder couldn't put a glove on it. 
Todd Helton. Two doubles tonight. He to replace Andres Galarraga, who had a great career with the Rockies and is now in Atlanta. But one thing Helton is going to have to live with in Denver is balls that get by him that people inevitably say, oh, the big cat would have had that one. The cat would have had that one because he's a, a right handed thrower and, the, and that ball is through his glove side. So. <laughs> But the big cat would have a lot of balls that, that most first basemen don't get. Jake Bell is the hitter. 0 for 2, looking for his first hit as a diamond back. Jake Bell and Matt Williams. And the idea being that Buck Showalter wanted these guys to uh, set the tone in the clubhouse, to lead by example. And the, the Diamondbacks have uh, been very adamant under Buck Showalter in terms of trying to get players of a certain character. That's a, a, a ball back out of play. Three and two to Jay Bell with one out and one out. You're right, John. That's been uh, by design to get these guys of character. Talk about character Travis Lee. As Buck Showalter mentioned, uh, his parents did a good job of him. That's quite a compliment. Very respected and respectful. On the other side for being a great talent. White at first. And strike three, the slider. And, and they've seen some they've been seen some tough breaking ball tonight from Kyle and Alex Scannett. But Travis Lee, he has put on a show. That was the first base hit in Diamondbacks history. In the fourth inning, he got another one. And then he saved the best for his third at bat, the first homer. So a three hit night for Travis Lee and counted three for three. This guy has never made an out as a big leaguer. His first major league game in the Diamondbacks first major league game. Called a strike on the outside. It was very quiet at the plate. Very short stride. Stays on the backside. And when he goes to swing, there's no loop in the swing. He goes right through the ball. Head is still. Head stays back. The guy will be talking a lot, a lot during the season. and really breaking him down. Good looking here. Well, Lisconic. He got the real tough slide ball working tonight. He strikes out the side. We go to the ninth inning. Eight, nine to one, Colorado. Now's the time to roll into Sears during our spring tire and wheel sale because you can save 20 to $60 on a set of four select Michelin, Bridgestone, Trail Handler, or Viper tires. Plus save an extra 10% off sale prices on all Z Racing custom wheels when you buy tires too. This sale ends soon and the clock is ticking. So get in, get tires, and get rolling. Sears Auto Center. know your jockey. Buongiorno e benvenuto. Transworld One is our chance to make a really good impression. A passenger's first thought when they step on board is, wow, all this space just for me. The food is fabulous. It's a lovely service. You really have to experience it. Oh, the seat, it's, it's so comfortable. It embraces you. We think it's a luxury service at a business class fair. All this and there's more to come. Transworld One. From Transworld Airlines. We want to be your airline. Au revoir et bon voyage. Gary Miller with another, another nugget from opening day, the traditional opener in Cincinnati. Mike Remlinger filling in for the disc, traded Dave Burba and Pokey Reese not helping him out. Barry Larkin will be out at least two more weeks. And Pokey tied an all-time record. Four opening day errors by a shortstop. Their worst opening day loss since 62. Kevin Brown 5-0 lifetime against Cincinnati. John? One of those days in Cincinnati. 
The Reds who, who traded their opening day starter yesterday, the day before opening day. I never heard of that, and I read a quote from Jack McKeon that he'd never heard of it either, and he's the manager of the Cincinnati Reds. <laughs> Russ Springer, the new pitcher here, had some pretty impressive numbers with the Astros last year. Hard-throwing big right-hander acquired in the uh, expansion draft. Todd Helton starting his first full season in the big leagues and he's had a, a fine evening two doubles an RBI and a walk a new outfield alignment now Brent Brady has moved from left over to right field Kareem Garcia has moved from right field to center field and Chris Jones who had pinch hit for the pitcher stays in the game to play left field Devon White leaves and Springer will hit or he'll be listed in the first spot of the order so there's the gas and Helton is retired. The Springer made it look so easy. Well, maybe they're trying to, they try to find a hole there on Helton, so they started pounding him middle in early in the game. All Helton got was pitches away, which is a, is his strength, and he went with the ball. So they they pounded him in, and you find out quickly in the big leagues. And his two doubles and his fly ball earlier were all to left field. Here's Nathan Perez, ball one. It's interesting that the Houston ball club get a little pitching shortage right now. They lost uh, two members of their bullpen, uh, Tom Martin and Russ Springer. Daryl Kyle is coming to Colorado. And now two of their other starting pitchers, Holt and Garcia, are on the They're disabled down. list. That's right. That was one of their strengths last year. Well, John Gerker could go to that bullpen. He had some guys who could uh, get the strikeout. I mean, he had, and he, uh, John Hudak is now with the Mets. That's right. Who deck and Billy Wagner and this guy Springer. Martin, a, a lefty. Fastball for a strike. Three and one to Nathan Perez. But I mean Springer had 74 strikeouts in 55 plus innings. Well he hits 91, 92 pretty much consistently. Out of play. Three and two the count. Worked on a split finger fastball on spring training also. Garcia, shallow center, and that is spot number two. We've certainly been pleased to have with us tonight, and this uh, they debut for this beautiful new retractable roof ballpark. The MetLife Blimp Snoopy Two under the command of Captains Marty Chandler and Doug McFadden. The MetLife Blimp has been providing aerial coverage of sporting and special events since 1987. One on to Kurt Manwaring. He's 0 for 4. Although the Rockies have not had too many offers tonight. Nine runs and 13 hits on the board for Colorado. They lead 9 to 1 in the ninth inning. New York Mets after a pretty good spring back in 1962. In the original National League expansion. Filled with high hopes, opened their season and lost their first nine games before they won. Don't the tell that to Buck tonight. In the first inning of their first game, they played in St. Louis against the Cardinals. Roger Craig was their pitcher. And he helped set up the first run that they allowed in that first game by, by committing a balk in the first inning. I think it's going to be different for Buck Showalter this year. I think they're going to be a team that should be very competitive in the NL West. Unfortunately, the NL West is one of the top two divisions in my opinion in Major League Baseball but behind the AL East. Just outside for a ball. One ball and two strikes. Springer facing Kurt Manwaring. Two down nobody on in the ninth inning. Two seconds. And that's the inning. So a perfect ninth by Russ Springer. He's the uh, only Diamondbacks reliever not to allow a run tonight. We go to the last of the ninth inning. Matt Williams will get one more shot at it. Nine to one, Rockies.
How do you separate knowledge from noise? Call Invesco. 38 no-load funds. 65 years experience. A global perspective. You should know what Invesco knows. Last chance for the Diamondbacks are trailing nine to one. We go to the last half of the ninth inning in game one for the Diamondbacks. And of course, game one of the season for the Colorado Rockies. Jerry DePoto comes on now. He'll be their closer. He did a very fine job as the closer in the second half of last season. So DePoto to face Matt Williams, then Brent Brady and Kareem Garcia. It's a much stronger Rocky bullpen this year with Hispanic back and healthy and Dupota who saved 16 games last year that's the way Don Baylor projects it right now as Hispanic is a setup man Dupota to come on and close it so he's getting an inning of, inning of work tonight and just to keep sharp even though they have the big lead well, they were hoping to even be a little stronger in the bullpen with uh, Bruce Ruffin but uh, he's on the disabled list they got four pitchers down at the extended spring down in Tucson all uh, with various injuries and they're trying to rehab John Burke Kevin Ritz Bruce Ruffin and Roger Bailey well, as Baylor said the 25 you break for opening day with are not the 25 they're going to end up with you in September or October hopefully for them here's Matt Williams and that's too high for ball one well, that one ballpark, tough to tell tonight from what we've seen on, on a cool night. What to expect in this ballpark. Certainly the Diamondbacks have been shut down. Castillo throws out Matt Williams and uh, Natty 0 for 4 here on opening night. And that will bring up Brent Brady. Coming up after the ball game, stay tuned for Sports Center. Rich Eisen and Stuart Scott will have. All the opening day highlights from around Major League Baseball. Also, the Jazz and the Sonics, perhaps with a, uh, a playoff preview. And uh, still talking about Kentucky's seventh national championship. Why not? Here's Brady, who is one for three. Brent Brady. And that is called a strike. Don Baylor, though, was convinced that this ballpark I think you talked about it earlier, Kevin. Will lead the league in triples and inside the park home runs. Not only because there are some big open spaces out there, but because there are so many different ways a ball can take an odd bounce uh, out there in the outfield. What'd you say? Pillars and girders? What are yeah. Pillars and girders out pillars there? And ledges. <laughs> and ledges. A lot of things for the outfielders to worry about in this ballpark. A lot of caroms in a Make it tough on the defense out there. Brady takes a strike. One ball and two strikes. We'll be right back here, by the way. Sunday night, our first Sunday night baseball telecast of the year, the San Francisco Giants. We'll meet the, the D-backs. Sean Estes and Andy Bennis. That's a foul up the first baseline. Helton picking it up. We hope to join us on Sunday, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Bonds and, uh, taking his first swings here over the weekend in this new ballpark and Matt Williams taking his first swings against the Giants the club with which he came up and starred for so many years and you see in Bonds that was one of the, the great one two punches in anybody's lineup Dusty Baker's ball club the defending champions of the National League West here in Phoenix Sunday night baseball well now maybe it'll be Lee and Williams in this ballpark. It's a one plus for Buck Show Walter and the Diamondbacks tonight. I think obviously you've got to be happy about the performance of Travis Lee. 
and the ability that he has. So, you know, Buck's thinking about that right now. I think Andy Bennis, the first five innings, uh, showed a lot of positive signs through the ball pretty well. I think he just got a little bit tired in the sixth inning. That is strike three call, and Brady is gone. Two down. So it goes for the Diamondbacks uh, on this night. Well, Buck will try to look at the positives. Here's a pretty good fastball that runs on the outside part of the plate. Good movement, a little bit, little bit high, but, but hit the corner. And uh, not a pitch that Brady wanted to swing at. Good movement. Going away from the left-hand hitter. Here is Kareem Garcia, 0 for 3 in the game. Daryl Kyle, 19 wins last year with Houston. The Diamondbacks, ironically, tried real hard to sign it. That one is driven deep into left center field. That one is gone. Kareem Garcia takes one out of the ballpark. To the opposite field, no less. That one just sounded good. Heard the wood off the bat. It sounded good. He centered that ball very well. That pitch was up and away from Green Garcia out over the plate. He took it right where it was pitched and drove it uh, deep into left center for the home run. Always been a power hitter. We touched on that earlier. Set pitch up about belt high, belt of thigh high. Good extension goes right with the pitch. For the home run. And now Fabregas takes a strike. Well, a couple of home runs to remember opening night for. For the Diamondback fans. Travis Lee hit the first one. Now Garcia hits one. And that is a ball. One ball and one strike. The Diamondbacks were hoping to get Daryl Kyle. He said he almost signed with him. And the last, uh, he ended up signing with the Rockies instead. And then ironically, his first game for the Rockies is against the Diamondbacks. And with all the worries people had about the poor spring training Daryl Kyle had, he showed you that spring training is important. Get your work in. Get your rhythm down. Build up your arm strength. But when the bell rings, and it rang today, he was ready. Seven solid innings and a great curveball and a solid 91, 92 mile hour fastball. Tim Belcher could have said the same thing. He had an, an outing in the spring about 10 days ago, gave up 13 runs. And he just shut down Baltimore today. Right. Dante Bichette, and that takes care of it. Fabregas flies out, the ball game is over. And the Arizona Diamondbacks, with all of their firsts here tonight, but the, the first win will have to come another night. Vinny Castilla, meanwhile, he loves this ballpark. Two homers, five runs batted in. Daryl Kyle, his first win in his first start. He's 1-0 and pitched very well. Although Travis Lee had the three-hit game. The budding star of the Diamondbacks. Tomorrow night, Wednesday night baseball doubleheader from the Astrodome. The Giants and the Astro Oral Hershiser at Hampton at 7.30 Eastern. And then opening night for the Yankees and Angels from Southern California. Now, stay tuned. Sports Center is coming up next. For Kevin Kennedy and our entire ESPN crew, this is John Miller. Good night from Phoenix. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.